Cause, cause that is that is actually the hot topic right now. Oh, uh, what's that? His ass kicking or something? Nah, six nine just he's he just uh, revealed that he's dropping a track with Kodak Black at midnight. What? Paid a million dollars for the feature. Who got a problem with it? He ain't told on no Haitian. He did mm. it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. If a nigga ain't told on me and my friends, I still fuck with him. Right. So you, yeah, that's your opinion on it. Oh uh, yeah, I think I think Ti should do a song with him. Uh, I think all rappers uh, should embrace Six Nine. Why Ti? Uh, because Ti worked with the Feds too. Okay, it'll be a great collaboration. They both had to collab with the Feds to, to reduce a sentence. Yeah. Uh, so so that's all I'm saying. So but but just look at it like this, homie. He never was a street. He never was a street guy. Right. If we're all gonna be honest uh, about Daniel. Uh, he never was a street guy. He shouldn't have never been let in, in, into a gang, uh, 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 such a notorious gang mm-hmm. uh, like the Eight Trey Bloods. And, and and not only that, they wasn't the best gang buddies to him. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, nah, man, they yeah, they didn't treat him like he was the nigga. They were robbing him and kidnapping him, fucking his baby mama, uh, eating up all the cakes in the cabinet. Uh, never replacing the, the the Pepsis that they were drinking. Smoking uh, bar- all the weed. Yeah, borrowing money, and never paying it back. Say, let me hold seven hundred, and acting like that seven hundred wasn't nothing. So you know, so then when the FBI get us, so now I'm giving y'all money to go do shit. So when the right. feds come get me, I'm not a street guy. I wasn't raised to hold on to these principles and these codes and these ethics that maybe some of you guys were taught from your uncles or maybe your mothers. Mm-hmm. So when the feds get me. And I'm trying to be tough at first. I want my lawyer. I'm not go snitch. But when they come back after seven, ten days, and I've been in isolation, I can't talk to nobody. Uh, they bringing breakfast late. They keeping the light on all night, and I can't go to sleep. Uh, it's a nigga across the hall beating on the door, looking at me every time I come to the door. And now when they ready to talk to me, God damn it, they playing a recording. They yeah. say, listen, Daniel, listen to this. You remember that phone conversation you had and you was on the phone with Big Shotty? Listen to this phone conversation. Now they play a recording of Big Shotty and Lil Ray Ray saying, yeah, that was us who kidnapped it. Boy, he was scared of the motherfucker. We had him peeing in his pants. And he and they hear, he heard them laughing. The next phone conversation they play, they got my woman and my OG on the phone talking about how good they fucking. Mm-mm-mm. Any nigga go tell. Yeah, right. I, I agree. Man, if I lay in jail too long and think about one of my homeboys that probably we done run a train on a hoe together, how good he fuck. Man, he ought to tell on him to get it because he going to be fucking my woman. Nigga, when I'm gone, he going to be putting that dick in my woman. You know how it go. Who going to be the first nigga to fuck your girl when you gone? Your buddy? <laughs> your homeboys. It ain't going to be no nigga cross town. It's going to be your homeboys or your ops. So why not tell on your homeboys and your ops to get them on in here, you get on out, and do to them what they was going to do to you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, shit. The way they did him. Yeah, I'm man. There's no honor amongst these. So just looking at that situation right there, homie, that's a clear definition where we should be teaching young boys. Uh, you really need to reevaluate who you give your honor to. Mm. Mm. Gems. So what's going on no. with you in academics? Oh, uh, man, he broke my heart. I thought we were real friends. Now, now I really believe when I meet these niggas in the industry and we spend time talking and, and we get some money together, I think we be... We be friends. At least they portray that type type of shit, right? Yeah. Uh, we get each other phone numbers and call me and exchange gifts and shit. Uh, so I think we be friends. I thought when you cross this side of the street, shit is more genuine. Uh, yeah, he broke my heart, homie. He, you know, I went on the Asian rant, and and I don't hate nothing, but I can play hateful. I can talk hateful. Yeah, uh, I can appear advocate. hateful, just like everybody else can when I'm upset about something and I'm passionate about it. Mm. So. I get a lot of flack for saying things about Asians. Uh, man, Asians have had some of the most horrific crimes in the last two years where adults have done things to black children, shooting them. Uh, and, and, and nobody have ever spewed any outrage of, or, or, or any emotions about that. So when I get in my emotions about something, I might say anything wild and crazy to make another motherfucker feel something. So uh, right. me and DJ Academics scheduled a comedy show uh, as soon as we dropped the, the, the tickets online, that bitch down there sold out like 70 to 80% within a week uh, in New York. And so wow. I got all these guys all of a sudden saying, Charleston said something about my daughter. I don't even know you, nigga. <laughs> right. Nigga, I didn't even know who Matt Hoffa was. 
Uh, I thought he was the hocus pocus 45th nigga. <laughs> I ain't know who these niggas is, homie. Right. So, so now, uh, I'm going at it with the with the math half a nigga back and forward. Saying, man, I don't know you, but okay, nigga, if you said I said it, yeah, I said it, nigga. Right. Fuck you. What yeah, now? I don't know. Well, yeah, what, I, what I don't now? even know you got no daughters, but yeah, I said it, bitch right. ass nigga. So, the China Mac dude chime in. So here they are. They making openly threats on all these podcasts about, yeah, he got a comedy show when he come to New York. What they go do to me? Uh, that check-in shit. Not no check-in. That they go do something to me straight, when I come to New up. York. They making it now, yeah, when he come to New York. Nigga, I'm going to hire police. Yeah, I'm going to go yeah. get them same motherfuckers that choke. What's that nigga name that was out there selling them cigarettes, that big nigga? <laughs> What's that nigga Eric. they choke? Eric going, they choke his ass. I'm going to go get you. I'm hiring them and go give them X, pay them double. Choke one of these niggas if they bother me. Yeah, now I'm going to go get the motherfucker that beat Rodney King. Yeah, I'm getting, I hire them kind of police. Them ones. Yeah, all they like is hurt niggas. Yeah, yeah so I go get them kind of people. So they saying, homie, they going on podcast, making interview, saying that they're going to bring harm to me for what I done said online. When I come do my show in New York. And I don't know you. Which had nothing to do with them. Ain't nothing to do with them. So I'm saying, why is China Mac chiming in on nigga business? Mm -hmm. This this nigga business. Mm -hmm. Asian boy ain't got no business over here in nigga business. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, I don't eat at Chinese restaurant. I eat at soul food joints. Right. It's different. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 now, it's, soy, yeah, soy sauce don't taste like hot sauce. I like hot sauce, Louisiana, the big jack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so he chiming in. So you already know me and you. I don't like you. I don't, it ain't that I don't like your people, but nigga, if I don't like you, I'm gonna play like I don't like your kids. Mm. Yeah, everything ugly to me. Yeah, your mom. Everything, everything about you. Yeah. If you, so this is what I say, homie. I say some horrific, horrible things about black people every day online. Right. Nobody has a problem. Soon as I say something about another motherfucker, oh, he, man, but God How damn it. dare he? So I'm saying to China Mac, homie, why are you chiming in again? You didn't have nothing to say when all the Asians were saying, fuck that nigga Charleston. Mm. That's a racial slur, no matter how hip hop you want to be. Right. When, when it's a bunch of Asians saying nigga Charleston, nigga Charleston, and ain't nobody mad about this. So guess what? Nigga, I got to defend my honor. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to say some mean and hateful things <laughs> in my honor. You where it hurts. <laughs> well, and so I said some mean and hateful things about Asian kids. Well, they said them in rap songs about our kids. So what I did, I changed rap lyrics, took the beat away, took the rhyming words away, and changed the color of the people and talked that to the Chinese people. Right. And they ran in an uproar. So DJ Academics gave China Mac a four-hour platform for him to oh, talk down yeah. about me. Here we go. So I'm saying to myself, well, shit, okay, allow me to rebut that. Allow me to get on this platform and explain, too. Right. The Houston News did a whole news story, homie. Charleston Asian hate rant. Maybe, like, I'm the whole most horrible person in the world. But that Asian guy who shot that eight-year-old baby, homie, y'all ain't had nothing to say about that. So I'm saying, okay, let me play villain then. So I kept playing villain. And, uh, DJ Academics pretended to, uh, because I'm saying, y'all hear me out. Call me up, DJ Academic. Let me do an interview and let me explain like you let China Mac explain. All these other platforms that's giving him a place to speak it. Call, let me say it. So nobody wouldn't give me one. So I created my own motherfucking platform. <laughs> they didn't like what I had to say. Right. So uh, they actually called the FBI on me, right? So uh, just, just no bullshit. Oh, so uh, whatever Asian politicians, uh, and I don't think Asian politicians are that powerful in the South. Uh, maybe in New York, but not in the South. Uh, I've never lived nowhere outside of the South. Uh, so all I know is black and white. Few Mexicans because I got Mexican babies. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know nothing about <laughs> Puerto Ricans and Cubans, Haitians. I learned Haitians as a kid. And the Haitian people was the most fascinating to me out of all people. Mm -hmm. Not Africans, not blacks, Haitians, right? So, so when they do this to me, nigga, I go ignorant nigga. Man, fuck the Asians, fuck the niggas, fuck anybody. I represent the nigga shit. Don't nobody say nothing about Tuka when they were smoking Tuka. Right. Don't nobody say nothing about this. So uh, I played villain, homie, and uh, DJ Academics couldn't take the pressure. 
uh, he couldn't take the pressure, and he lied and said that uh, Live Nation canceled the tour. He got calls from Live Nation. I can understand the Asian politicians saying, hey, we don't want him here, uh, but I'm not here for the Asian people. The niggas was supposed to stand up and say, no, nah, nigga, we going to let you come over here to this juke joint. Right. And shout out to my guy, Kareem Blitz. Because my guy, Kareem Blitz, said, nah, homie, can't nobody stop you from coming from New York. I'm from New York. We're going to find a black spot that you can come to. Homie, we don't, we go back to the Negro Leagues in my mind. When niggas played in the park and we had some of the best baseball players in the Major League Baseball had to come watch the Negro League and then invite them to come on, yeah. come on, Robinson, come on, boy, we need these niggas. So I'm saying, nigga, we don't know. So in my mind, this is our opportunity in America to get behind Charleston White, draw the line with the Asians because they got a federal hate bill we don't. See, I can't say, I can't, so if, so if China Mac was to attack me, I'm not protected under law. He is. Mm -hmm. If I was to have a show there, because the Asians have a federal hate bill, and I've said hateful things online, I can't even really protect or defend mm -hmm. myself. See, see, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. The black race was supposed to get with me and say, no, nah, we rocking with that nigga. Right. What's go be, go be behind this, because it ain't right. They can say nigga, and we can't say chink and booty face. Come on now. Mm -hmm. They can create Asian crip gangs that kill black gangs, but the Asian crip gangs don't kill other Asian gangs. There's no black gangs killing Asians. Black people are not waking up, projecting their crimes and hate and, and violence upon Asian. Niggas are killing niggas. Niggas ain't raping Asian people. They raping the little girls in our neighborhoods, their cousins, their nieces, the women they dating daughters. They ain't violating Asians. The most that's just happening to Asians is black communities. Them bitches going in there, running out, not paying, getting their nails done, and stealing nail polish. <laughs> that's the most. <laughs> So when DJ uh, Academics give this give China Mac this platform, I'm saying, okay, he, we friends, my nigga. My look. Yeah, let me explain let me myself. My you shit. know I'm not hateful. Even DJ Vlad says he's not. I'm, he's not hateful. Right. So they know I'm not hateful. So uh, when he did that, homie, he made me believe that Live Nation and nobody in this comedy world want to have anything to do with me. So I started doing my own comedy show. At that time, I had done like 16. And I had a big one that was in my hometown in Dallas. Okay. I had just got a billboard put up in Las Vegas uh, right in front of the MGM Grand. But he my buddy. So I'm thinking, man, I done fucked up. He got me thinking that they got That's so much good. power that they can counsel black people. He made me think that Asians and whoever, China, they got so much power they can counsel black people. And they can't. So was it academics? Did DJ been, academics we... pulled the show. Uh -huh. That's why he let me keep the money. Contractual wise, the show wasn't canceled. That's why I never had mm. to return the money. And he paid me up front and full. Right. They tried to ask mm. for the money back, but I'm a nigga who read contracts. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> yeah. He had his whoever tried to get the money, but I'm a nigga who read contracts. Word for word. And understand contractual law. Yeah. So uh I, I didn't have to return the money. Uh, he went on a longer rant as if, man, them people were saying they was looking at him fucked up for even wanting to do business with me. Like, he even made a statement. They were even questioning his judgment of who, why would you want to do business with this kind of guy? When right now, homie, I'm on Live Nation's website page. Right now. Right now. It's contradicting. TK yeah. Kirkland made one phone call. Hey, man. I'm thinking about putting you on my Live Nation tour. I've been watching you for a couple years. We met in person like two, two men, uh, looked one another in the eye, and, and shook hands, and that's our agreement because that agreement, a handshake is, is, is yeah. Oh, it's bond. That's yeah. a bond under yeah. law in court. Especially somebody like TK. That's a legend. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so he made one phone call to Live Nation. He called me back and said, uh, a Live Nation representative is going to call you back to get your information. Home, I get Live Nation checks right now. Mm. Come on. My checks got Live Nation on it. Come on. Yeah, so it definitely so, wasn't Live Nation. Nah, right. nah. So, so that hurt mm. me, homie, because I thought we were friends. And, and, and the whole time, right now today, I'm still looking at my phone, waiting for him to call me and tell me everything he told internet. No word from him? Silence? Not to this deal, homie. No, no have, PR, have you no tried to reach out to him? Yeah, I reached out to him, homie, and told him I was going to give him a free interview uh, so I can tell my side Just of the story. To, yeah. And he was, he was up for that. But then uh, he, 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 he too... 
it's hard for me to move forward with a man who ain't got a spine or a backbone. Mm. Uh, the, 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 Tough. Homie, uh, when you're wrong or you fuck with a nigga you, you think is wrong, you don't quit talking to the nigga because he's wrong. You call and tell him you think he wrong. Let you hear it from me. You called and tell that nigga, I think you wrong, my nigga. You wrong in a motherfucker, my nigga. Goddamn, woo, 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 woo. You don't go tell the world he wrong, and you say we friends. So I'm saying this industry friend shit is bullshit. Mm, yeah. yeah, he yeah, yeah, he yeah, he broke my heart, homie, with that friend shit. And nigga, I done met a lot of niggas, homie, in this industry. Uh uh from Shannon Briggs. I done sp- spent the night at his house with his wife and children. Uh homie, that's my partner. That's my nigga. Yeah. Uh, it's a whole bunch of more of the niggas, homie. Uh, Murder Pain. I just hold measy. It's a whole bunch of niggas I done fuck with, homie. Uh, and, 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 and I may have said some things that may have offended them and they didn't like. Uh, nigga, they called and we talked about it. Just that's it. Boy. Yeah. Right. But when you ain't got no spine or no backbone, it's hard for you to tell somebody uh, who you think may challenge you right. that they wrong. That seems to be a reoccurring thing, man. Because one thing about it, whether you like it or not, a lot of the shit you be saying is true. Well, it's, it's, it be factual. Uh, and, and, it's, and, just, it's just people don't want to uh, hear it. In my defense, homie, uh, I'm waking up with no script. Mm. A rapper got a script. Right. He going in the booth. Set spew, list. You know, he, he, he got his 16 bars. Uh, most comedians do the same set. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wake up every day and, and give away free comedy. Mm. Uh I don't repeat the same shit every day. I don't wake up and just say people's names. Uh, I respond to people saying my name. Uh, I fuck with all celebrities, so I'm not just picking on no celebrity. Uh, until I became one, uh, I thought we didn't matter. I thought the mm-hmm. average person online with a mouth like Charleston White's didn't matter to a Jay-Z, that he couldn't hear me. I'm so far up in the air, I don't hear niggas corny. What do you say to Nas? I'm in the air, I don't hear something corny. Hear yeah, I can't hear you. So in my mind, Boosie can't hear me when I say, man, and a nigga son, uh, he can't hear me. When, when I say T.I. name, he can't hear me. I didn't know my voice was ringing that loud. So when did you realize that? Uh, when they started responding to me. And, and they broke my heart, homie. Uh, I thought the rapping niggas was the real G, uh, good fella, godfather type niggas. I thought them niggas was the real thoroughbred. Uh, I thought them niggas was our warriors. I thought them niggas was our mental warriors uh, until here within the last 15 years and, and, and growing up and getting the real stories of, of, of who these people are. Uh, I grew up idolizing these niggas, homie. Uh, nigga Jay-Z words is like God to us sometimes. Tupac words is like Jesus and Malcolm X, nigga, get us through life, get us through court cases, uh, help us fix relationships, make us feel bad at times. These niggas is like the Holy Spirit with their words. They convict us, they inspire us. Nigga, we don't know about Moet till these niggas tell us to drink Moet. Mm. <laughs> nigga, we don't know about Molly till these niggas interest reduces to Molly's. We don't know about none of this shit, nigga, to these niggas go overseas and the white man get it to them or wherever they get it. We don't know <laughs> nothing about our money. Yeah. We don't, until they tell us. So we waiting on these niggas to tell us where the next 10 years we go do with our lives. So uh, when these niggas started responding to me, I'm saying, man, these niggas just like us. They in they feelings. These millionaire niggas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> with all these guys, these niggas really listening to me? And, uh, I know if you listening to a nigga, you can be played on. The preacher play on everybody. If you listening, the politicians play because you listening. That's how they can play on you. So if I catch a nigga listening, I'm going to play on him. So uh, I start playing on these niggas. I start playing into everything that they don't like, but they accept. Mm. Snitching, telling, calling the cops. So so I started... uh, Homie, I just, I just came to play. Uh, I'm the class clown online playing psychological game with niggas that's listening. Because in my mind, uh, hoes want to hear it and niggas want to see it. Uh. The hoes want to sit up and listen to the preacher preach. Yeah. Nigga want to see a hoe shake her ass. Let me see your titties. Show me your pussy. Because we're excited by what we see. We ain't turned on by what we hear. So I'm saying, nigga, when did the niggas start getting turned on by what they hear? These mm. niggas turned on by whether they offended or not. They turned on by it. 
Yeah. And they can't cut me off. So when, when T.I. responded, nigga, T.I. was my favorite rapper. Boosie was my favorite rapper. Right. Jeezy was my favorite rapper. Tupac is my all-time favorite rapper. So uh, when I realized Tupac wasn't really a thug, mm. I could have been, been a greater person if they would have told me this story about who he was when I was a kid. If somebody could have wrote me a book, because I've read everything Tupac. Uh, I studied all his lyrics. I got made nigga tattooed on my back from the song he got made nigga. Nigga, I'm the seed of, a, of Tupac. I'm the brain he sparked as a kid, right? But if they would have told me the truth, uh, I would have had a short journey into criminal activity. I would have had a short, I, I would have, I would have had a short journey in, a, in, in, in developing a, 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 a criminal mind. That wouldn't have been my aspirations. Mm -hmm. uh, I would have got into acting. Uh, I would have got in, into what I became later on in life. After realizing yeah. everything. Yeah. I heard you say that in the interview, too. You said, um, all I'm really doing is showing y'all that these people are not who they portray in their music. Yeah. You got so-and-so talking about shooting, talking about killing, talking about drug dealing. You didn't do none of that. You know, so it's it's like uh, I, I I shared I shared a video on, on Instagram of young thug talking about killing somebody kids, and there was no outrage. Right. Uh, there's songs about Biggie. Uh, you know, fuck your daughter, throw over the bridge. Yeah. So I I I've literally broke the culture down in almost a curriculum like form, and say, okay, y'all, we got songs to back date to this. Niggas talking, rapping about, talking about being at the high school. And we every bit of know these niggas when they 25, 26, 27, 28 years old. But that was common. Uh, it's still common today. We just ignore it. Is, <clears throat> I see what you're doing. You know, everybody's like, Charleston's White's a troll. He's, yeah, he's doing this, he's doing that. He's just poking the bear and all that. Is, is Charleston White a fictional character? Uh, is it is it something you put on? Uh, yeah. Uh, because nobody calls me Charleston White. Okay. Nobody in life calls me Charleston <laughs> White. Charleston White is a fictional character. Huh. Uh, I mean, everybody called me Blue in person. Okay. What's up, Blue? From fact, that's my childhood name. I got the name Blue because it was Charleston Blue, and that name come from uh, my dad' name is Charles Ray Williams, so my mother named me Charleston, Charleston Jamon White. I got an uncle, and I talk about him all the time, my Uncle Wayne. He was a pimp. Uh, when I was born, there was a movie that came out in, like, 1976 called Come Back, Charleston Blue, about a pimp, street uh, nigga. That was my uncle's favorite movie. So his <laughs> nephew name is Charleston. So, nigga, he named me Charleston Blue. Yeah. So before I even knew my name was Charleston White, I thought it was Charleston Blue because my family, oh, there go that Charleston Blue. So I was the excitement <laughs> of the family, uh, even when I was a, a baby as a kid. Uh, homie, I was the class clown. Uh, I've been the life of the party. So this is these are natural talents and gifts. Right. So I wake up every day, don't know what the fuck I'm going to talk about until <laughs> people online start saying shit in the comment section. I don't know what the fuck I'm going to talk about. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> and I be on a three, four times a day, hours at a time, with Jeez. no just going in and out. Yeah. So I'm saying, imagine if somebody give me a script, a movie script, and I'm doing this with no script, homie. Imagine if somebody told me, okay, man, this is what you can do, this is what you can't do. I didn't get online reading the community policies to say what I to see what I can do. I just got online. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what you could or couldn't do. Community guidelines. Yeah, do, I didn't do you know. deal with bands? Do they, All do they the time. Try? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm shadow banned in every aspect you can't imagine. Yeah. Man, I'm shadow banned in every aspect of shadow banning. <laughs> uh, every last, I am the shadow. <laughs> every last one of my social media platforms have been demonetized. And I was making a lot of goddamn money. Now yeah. all my money come out uh, interviews and, and comedy uh, and merchandise. I sell a lot of merchandise. So a lot of people actually go to my website and buy my shit. Uh, Twitter too? I ain't even on Twitter. Okay. How come? Uh, I don't know. I can't manage shit. I'm, man, I'm <laughs> drowning in, in YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. So you uh, control them all? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I control them all. Yo, by the way, if you're watching now, please hit that like button, that subscribe button. Again, we're live with Charleston White. You know what I'm saying? Hello. This is what you do. If you don't hit subscribe, your girl's going to hit subscribe before you. You're going to be wondering why. And now you know. He got a workout machine in the back, fella, so he ain't lying. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, 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 homie, uh, 
the banning, the shadow banning of social media uh, forced me. Uh, nigga, they were giving me $16,000 a month mm. just on YouTube. Come on. Nigga, that was in the, that's, that's the first time I ever got on YouTube. I don't think people know what it takes to get that kind of money off that's YouTube. The fir- and, and that's not even getting 100,000 views. That's not even having 100,000 subscribers. That's getting on YouTube in January of, of 2021. Uh, my first check was $200. It went from $200 to $2,000, $2,000 to $4,000, $4,000 to $6,000. So from January to May, nigga, I had got up from $200 a month to $16,000. And that's only with, I had 60,000 subscribers. That's my first time ever on YouTube. Uh, none of my views was getting 100,000 views. But I started learning what, what the CPNs are. Uh, mm-hmm. I, st- I started learning uh, where to put the videos. Yeah. I, I, I started, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so how to work it, put yeah, the captions. And yeah. 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 I, I started learning the, the, the importance of not clickbaiting and, and having real titles. Uh, was there somebody that said, hey, man, you got to put your stuff out there, man? Uh, was nah, there somebody that heard you at the barbershop and they like, listen, Blue, man, you got you to gotta tell, you got to speak. Yeah, no, nah, uh, I, I, was, I was the Facebook king from, from 2016 to 2019. So I was getting millions of views on other people's pages on, 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 on Facebook. Mm-hmm. I had a homeboy, man, my partner, same. This nigga get up and go to work every day and take care of seven kids. Oh, uh, nigga made me feel stupid waking up every day. <laughs> and every time he look at me, I'm on this goddamn phone. <laughs> and then I'm doing this. Yeah. Because at that, because the thing about Facebook is, if you're on Facebook engaging every day, you and the motherfucker you don't know are arguing for two weeks in the comment section. Back to back to back. You don't even know this motherfucker. Uh-huh. And you're developing some feelings for a person you don't even know. Mm. Not only that, you're waking up just looking at nothing. What other motherfucker saying? <laughs> you posting pictures of your food. You taking some pictures. Right. You ain't getting nothing. <laughs> so I had got a job one time with this nigga. And I started going live, and it was 60-some people on there. And I thought that was the shit. I got 60 motherfuckers watching me. Yeah. That nigga said, man, who you talking to? I said, nigga, these people right here. He said, man, ain't nobody talking to you. I said, nigga, it's 60 motherfuckers right here. Right. And he said, ain't none of y'all getting no money. <laughs> man, that's some wild <laughs> shit. Why? I felt Why? stupid later on that day. Uh. So every time I grabbed my phone, I would feel dumb and stupid because what I started noticing I know that when I take my daughter to gymnastic practice, I drop, mm. I go up in them stands, and I get on that motherfucking phone. Yeah. And I be seeing my baby look up there at me. I look for a minute, boy, she go to doing her thing. I go back to that phone. <laughs> so then it. I started noticing when I spend time with them, they would have to say, Daddy, look. Daddy, look. Nigga, I ain't getting nothing out of this. Right. Just off the freeze. Nigga, I'm, I'm supposed to be starting cooking. 20 minutes ago, but I've been on this motherfucker going back. Yeah, I'm not yeah. getting nothing. Consume you. So, nigga, I started feeling stupid and dumb waking up every day, especially when I find out you can get paid for being on there. Mm. So then all of a sudden, I saw the movie Social Dilemma uh, on Netflix. Oh, yeah. When I saw Social Dilemma, <laughs> I was not going to keep waking up, touching this motherfucking phone, getting on the social media app, and I can't figure out how to get that goddamn money that they say mm-hmm. they getting out for because I'm a game-related nigga, my nigga. So I, had, so I started figuring out they pay on all social media platforms. Yep. Nigga, I got to the money. <laughs> you can't let me know it's some That's money. Cool. It's a pot of gold over there, nigga. All I got to do is jump over this fence, go under this hole, rasp, run past this dog, yeah, nigga, I'm going to go get it. <laughs> shit, that's what I did. <laughs> so none of the shit I'm saying on her is personal, homie. I started understanding the algorithms by fucking around on the YouTube studio. So I started uh, noticing that YouTube have a whole university for a nigga. Yep. If you go fuck around, just fuck around on that YouTube studio, look over there in that corner where all them videos, you click, nigga, that's a whole YouTube university. So, and, yeah. so, and so what you go get out of that is a bunch of game. And then as you getting game, and going through those courses and clicking on those videos, YouTube is going to tell the algorithm, hey, this is one of my students. Yeah, yeah, you don't yeah, have yeah. to be so hard on him. Push him to push, the front. Push him to the front. Yeah. Let all his videos go advertiser friendly. Turn them green without no manual appeals. The niggas who just going to go look over there to see how much he made for the month, every time he make a video, he got to put it on private. Let YouTube go through his thing. Do his manual. Because he don't know the game. 
So I start. So when I start, you're putting pick, us on the game right now. <laughs> so, yeah. So so when I start picking up the game, uh, nigga, that's when I created my podcast. Game related, not gang related. Game applied means elevation. Now nah, we game related niggas, not gang related niggas. I like that. Yeah. So nigga, it's a lot of game in this shit. So I'm four years in now. Really. So I, so 2020, I didn't start. It took me a year to figure it out. So 2021, so nigga, I'm two years in it. And I don't make no money off YouTube no. So what I had to do was, God damn it, nigga, $16,000 a month gone. And I done bought, I done spent all the money on guns. <laughs> yeah, nigga, I spent all the YouTube money on guns. Nigga, I got over, yeah, I spent all the money on guns. Guns and bullets and bulletproof vests. Because yeah. in my mind now, I'm for the bill. In my mind, yeah, yeah. nigga, the money was gone. So I went from, from, from July to August. I created another page, uh, and once I got, I was monetized within 48 hours of this new page. Once I started going live and did a manual review, they said, now, nah, nigga, you think they shut that motherfucker down. So I've been operating off that page from August of 2021 with, with, with no money, and it's over 200 and some thousand subscribers. So I started wearing black people. So I started telling black people, y'all just send me your clothes. I'm going to wear all black people clothes for free. I would never charge for years. So that's how I built my platform. So then Smart. once the, so, so, so then I, I, I was just free promotion, free advertising. Uh, and then it hit me that if I can generate a following that will monetize me within 48 hours after losing this big following, Maybe I can create a website and they start buying the shit they like for me to say. The yeah, yeah, nah, all the nanny. So I started selling that shit on And so I created a website. So I took the little bit of money I had left uh, and, and I bet on me. Uh, sad in the motherfucker. You hear me? Yeah. Sad in the motherfucker. I bet on me, built that website. Uh, and so I just used the YouTube channel for free to do free promotions. Mm -hmm. uh, and then direct people to the website. Yeah, direct boom, boom, boom. people to the website. And, 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 and so then I started knowing how to sell the character in interviews. Mm. I start knowing how to go, nigga, I'm going to deliver. I'm going to get you your 100,000, 200,000. I'm going to get you at least 100,000 uh, uh, views where you go touch some thousands. Right. So, yeah, so I started knowing how to sell myself in those interviews, the character, Charleston White. So mm -hmm. I started branding Charleston White. So from that moment on, I started branding Charleston right. White. Yeah. I didn't have a YouTube page. Y'all go to my YouTube. So I started branding Charleston White. Uh, What's the website just for people who uh, don't know? So www.therealcharlestonwhite.com. Oh, okay. uh, so I started branding Charleston White, homie, uh, in, in, in the little cliche things that I would say. So I put the Gunner Tell shirts on there. The Gunner uh, Tello? Yeah, I put that the Gunner Tell. one of the so, most creative sayings yeah, I've ever heard in uh, my damn life. Uh, yeah, we like that one. That's so, one. So, 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 even, so, so then I started, I started noticing that uh, people would take my voice. Uh, and put them on all other social media platforms and, mm. and, and, and start doing voiceovers. And then, nigga, uh, my partner whispered in my ear. Uh, see, a lot of these nigga partners whispered in their ear and said, hey, you know if a woman eat your ass, you'll come. For real, nigga? <laughs> and so now they've been getting their ass ate ever since. <laughs> my, my, <laughs> partner, my partner whispered in my ear and said, say, nigga, you ain't trademark this, you ain't trademark that. Mm. I said, no. Nah. He said, nigga, you ain't winning ass cap your voice and BMI your voice. Nigga, they playing your voice on TikTok. Left That's how right. I got on TikTok. So, nigga, I went and published my voice to get a publishing check just like the rapper. Them 22 million views and million with that Charleston White voice. Yeah, nigga, everywhere you hear my voice, I got a check coming from that. Yeah, check. we got to set that up, too. Make sure you like, subscribe, and make sure you play my voice everywhere. Yeah, guys. man, my brother. <laughs> add, so, in the music section of uh, YouTube and Instagram and TikTok, they got my voice. The nigga, Charleston I went and published White. that motherfucker. Damn right. So, nigga, I started getting sharp and sharper as I was playing Dumb and Dumb online. <laughs> but you also made the transition into live performance. Were you uh, always doing comedy, or nah, was that always a, uh, an idea? I, I was a public speaker. Uh, so bef before I got to the uh, internet, home, I was a motiv public speaker, motivational speaker. Uh, I spoke at some of the most prestigious college colleges. universities in the country. Yeah. Uh, I used to, How did you get into that? Uh, youth advocacy. Uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, I used to be a part of this organization called I Can Incarcerated Children's Advocacy Network. And it was based mm. and, and it fell under the uh, umbrella in Washington, D.C., uh, which was a lobbyist or, or organization for, for, for laws and legislation in this country called Campaign Fair Sentencing for Youth. Uh, mm. You know, a bunch of good hearted white Jewish people, man, that, that, that wanted to reform laws in, in this country for juveniles. Uh, up until that point, I didn't know that 
that America, Sudan, and North Korea were the only three countries on earth that would take a 12-year-old kid and give them life without parole. Sure. So, uh, so I did, you know, so I ain't going to go into all that. So that's how I got into it, right? All my niggas done time for murder. And so I grew up in the boys' home with niggas who had killed people. So uh, my niggas them done 30 years. 27 years, 25 years from young. Uh, from young. And I yeah. thought that was something. But nigga, we can't imagine doing a crime at 12 and having to die in prison for it. Can't imagine. Nah. So, so, uh, so I, I, I literally, uh, if you was to pull up this document uh, with the Supreme Court, uh, my name, you would see my name on Amika's brief. Uh, I was one of the ones uh, who they used the story to submit uh, to the Supreme Court. Uh, to get this law abolished in, in, in America where children are long, no longer automatically given. Wow. Uh, so when people hear me speak about Marlo, Mike, and Boosie, uh, that's where that come from. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I was personally involved in that law that, that he sentenced under. Uh, wow. There's another guy by the name of Eric Brown, E. Solid, uh, that's on Instagram. Uh, he went in at 15, 16. He and I never knew we would meet each other when I was working on this law. Uh, but he's out because we did that. So you're part of the uh, reason that, that Boozy got freed, you're saying? No, 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 no. Marlo Mike uh, was, was a 15, 16 years old uh, when he was sentenced uh, for those, what, nine murders? And he was sentenced to juvenile life without parole. Uh, he lost his appeal because part of the Supreme Court was that uh, they would have to include mitigating factors and, and, and mitigating circumstances uh, when considering uh, giving a child life His without age. parole. Yeah. Uh, so when you look at Marlo's Mike life, uh, uh, he don't deserve life without parole. Mm. Uh, when you look at a, a kid that, that, that doesn't have a real fully developed brain and, and been suffering and, and battling with, with mental health, yeah. uh, not just mental health issues, uh, substance abuse issues on top of that, and, and you was born into violence. Uh, you seen people be killed and murdered. You see, you see, what I'm saying? as yeah, a kid, yeah. never really so, so, had a shot. Really. Yeah, like, yeah. So, uh, uh, placed in the right environment in the right situation, uh, with the right resources and tools, homie, uh, we all can be re redeemed. Mm -hmm. We all can. Do you think prison really reforms people? You goddamn right. You, think so? you ever seen them nappy head niggas come out there with all them goddamn waves in their head? Them niggas have a beehive full of waves. Clean you ever seen a nigga coming up my side, come out big, looking like him, health in a motherfucker? <laughs> Shit, yeah. Them niggas get the, them birds grow. Yeah, nah, man, prison do them niggas some goddamn good. Because the, the whole objective of the criminal justice system, and it's always been this, the whole concept is to catch a motherfucker during what they call your prime crime years. Usually that's, mm. it used to be 15 to 25. Okay. Used to be 15 to 25. That's why the insurance rate, you know, lower the rates at 25. Yep. That's that granddaddy in them. Because kids were more mature back then. We come along, homie, mm. they had to lengthen that. Nigga, our generation, our prime crime years was 12 to 40. That's why you see a lot of niggas now just now coming home at our age that was gone from 16, 17, 18. And them niggas driving trucks. They good husbands. They say, excuse me. They wait for the sign to turn walk at the light. They don't just walk when the hands say stop. They be some different kind of nigga because your testosterone levels aren't as high as they are. You're on as brute anymore. Uh, uh, you understand consequences more now. You logically understand consequences now, nigga. Yeah. Cause when you go to jail, when they say take this mop and mop, you mop, don't you? Yeah. When you go to visitation, he say get naked, take them pants off, turn around. You, you don't say yeah, you do it, don't you? So you understand consequences if you don't, nigga. Right. So that's why I don't really bother the young niggas. I bother these old gangster niggas that still promoting this shit like they don't understand consequences. Mm -hmm. You niggas still holding on these code. You can't make me believe you nigga won't tell that forty. <laughs> right. You can't make me believe you niggas wrong. ain't gonna tell on nobody at 40 if you really didn't do nothing. Now I believe most of you niggas, if you say, okay, I'm going to go do this a week, you probably wouldn't. But nigga, let somebody put you in a fluke situation. You're gonna tell, nigga. Yeah. Gonna yeah. tell her. Gonna tell I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna get this <laughs> shit straight. So uh could nigga like pussy too much. Right. <laughs> a young nigga don't know he getting up pussy forever. 
No, no, no. Niggas like the weekend too much. Niggas like <laughs> comfort too much to stand mm. on these codes the way they talking like they standing on these codes. it comes down to it. Man, know. these niggas playing sick to go to the hospital. Young Thug done been to the hospital 10 times since that trial. Playing like all he eating is Snickers and chips. <laughs> Man, they, he know they ordering pizza from the back sale. Them niggas running the jail. Yeah, yeah. Them niggas getting caught now. Now they want to pray. Now they want to send, what's YMW Melly now? He want to send words out to the Lord now. Yeah. Y'all wasn't doing none of this Never. shit, but y'all were having them threesomes. Damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, homie, I know everybody playing. So, nigga, I come to play to expose the play. What do you think about the Young Thug case? Uh, I think he needs some time. Uh, we got the show, homie. Let's see who really bought this shit, because they talk that shit. But, nigga, I come from a generation in the era, everybody wanted to go to jail because they wanted the stripes. This group here want all the recognition but don't want the lashes that come with the stripes. Mm. Mm. Now, nigga, O.J. Simpson sat in jail three, four, five years with no bond, reading a fan mail. These niggas want bonds. These niggas rapping from the jail cell. Nigga, they now an Italian gangster phone conversation. He making love on the phone to the women. Right. Homie, we got to redefine and expose this shit. Everybody fake. These ain't the real gangsters. Homie, how's all these niggas got conversation with the police? All this shit. Whether they having, whether they saying, homie, I thought niggas don't talk at all. Right. Guess not. So I'm saying <laughs> uh, what's happening now is the prison guards this is day day. This is the this is the this is the this is the guards time now. Everybody get a time to shine. Yeah. This is the guards time to shine. Prison guards is up. Some kind of way, nigga. They releasing these motherfucking videos showing us how these niggas behaving behind these walls and what they doing. Yeah, that's the wildest shit. It's a lot of shit. Let me get that bottle out. over there. Yeah. So 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 nah, homie. So I'm saying, if if, if they don't show us, if 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 MSNBC lock up. Didn't show us a nigga like Fleece Johnson. We wouldn't have known it was a nigga like that down there that openly say, nigga, I like booty. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, we didn't know them niggas would openly say that. Right. We didn't know. We thought, you know. So if MSNBC hadn't been going in prison showing us this, all the niggas who come from home from prison tell us all the bravado right side of shit. Well, now they got people leaking videos. I don't know if you've seen that them King Little J... Them the JCOs. Who else, who else getting them videos? Ow. No bloggers getting them. You're, you're not going to get no jail video from a, a free press uh, request. So what's your thoughts on that? Because uh, he said it wasn't him. That he lined. That was his forehead. And they, and they <laughs> put the cut that. That was his forehead. Yeah, they, he had somebody <laughs> giving him a lap dance up there. Oh, uh, well, shit. it was like a punk just sitting on his lap. But then they released another video of a yellow, light-skinned, feminized kind of guy being interviewed at, in an assault. Saying, what was y'all doing up there? He said, oh, no, you can just something, something, something. He said, no, you're not fit to go back there. What was y'all doing up there? He, this is what he said Lil' Jay done to him. He grabbed me by my neck, and he said, I'm just like a sissy. <laughs> he said he grabbed, because this is what the cop said. Yeah. Hold your neck up. He did this. So in my mind, I said, oh, boy, they been back there putting hickeys on each other's neck. Boy, them niggas are freaking like a motherfucker. <laughs> so the cop stepped out, and he said, what's that on your neck? And then the, and then the, the sissy broke down and said, uh, well, he choked me around my neck. I'm tired of this. He choked me because he told me to come here and I didn't come here. And I'm, ty I'm tired of him choking on me. I said, man, that nigga putting that dick in the boys. Uh -huh. Tough motherfucker. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> so, crazy. So when they interview him. It's crazy because you think these Chicago rappers of all of them. No, nah, right? I don't. Uh -uh. I saw an interview where them niggas say once they get through fighting. Mm, and one of them knock each other out. Hey, we finna spit in his booty. Luke in the booty. I said, what? Everybody they doing around. that in jail? <laughs> you gonna knock me out and Lou get my booty. Oh, you nigga, oh. Yeah, yeah. There's what y'all doing that for? There's a new shirt right there. Knock out with a loogie and a booty. Yeah, so what y'all doing that for? Come right. on, homie. I ain't never heard that they do that in jail. I heard but if they, man, like, nigga, fuck you if he do that to you. Fuck, so I'm saying, why would they be doing that if they ain't doing that? Mm. <laughs> oh, man, some crazy shit going on. So, so now, homie, listen. It's nothing more enjoyable than a police officer, a correction officer, to shame what the streets think is tough. Oh, they love that. They love that, yeah. homie. They love that. Kick out of that. It's so why you everybody. think they giving us, homie? 
They showing us, homie. They shaming these niggas. But it look like it ain't no shame in what they doing. Because even though people are watching it, his homeboys are saying that's him. He's saying that they lying. Because people idolize the image that these niggas portray. Yeah. They play like they can't see it. So they done release two videos. Fast, too. Come on, homie, fast. Back to back. Is, is there not any repercussion for sending up for putting out these videos? Because they uh, gotta know who's putting these videos well, out, right? It's, it's hard to know. Who listen, when I come to work and download this, who know I'm who know I'm I'm screen recording this with my phone? Who know? Yeah. And sliding it. They don't want no repercussions. They want the public to see this. Because everybody wants to shatter the image of the tough guy. Yeah, this is your hero? These are bullies, homie. Right. These ain't player type niggas. So with King Von, the, the video just came out about him. He was playing. That little, yeah. killer, that little killer motherfucker was playing. You saw what he did. I, th he, I think he was being smart. Well, you saw what he did when he went up there. He slipped the handcuffs yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He slipped the handcuffs yeah. off. So we saw we, what he did. Yeah. Because <laughs> for one, they got to figure out where they go put you. So they go put you where all the, yeah, you saw. So yeah, they went and transferred him somewhere in handcuff. The guards probably know him. Nigga, he in there on five murders. All the witnesses came up dead. That's the only way them charges got dropped. Yeah, yeah, That's what people keep forgetting, homie. Hmm. He ain't fucking no punks. That nigga yeah. there killing, demonizing shit. You could tell how he said it in the video, too. He was like... This, when yeah. somebody said something to him, he said, yeah, they tried to get me to suck their dick, too. I said, been a nigga playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then yeah, the yeah, next yeah. video come out, he half ass beating the nigga's death in handcuffs. <laughs> he done slipped out his handcuffs. The other nigga in handcuffs ain't got no win. <laughs> yeah, this is what he was trying to do, y'all. <laughs> They released another video to really back up that, that little J-boy because he got a yellow punk this time. And the punk said he tired of him. I'm tired of him doing me like That's this. I didn't he choked me. He <laughs> choked me because I wouldn't come to him when he told me to come. You know how you do your hoe when you're Yo. abusive? Bitch, I told you. Yeah, you know how the nigga, you nigga, this abusive ass nigga do his hoe when he tell Bitch, what I tell you? Yeah. So he doing the punk like that. So, nah, homie, uh, this is what I'm saying. This is a good thing for the culture. This is great for the culture. Nigga, Michael Sam wasn't the first gay nigga in the NFL. He was the first nigga that wanted to tackle and say I'm gay. But nigga, it's a bunch of them niggas in there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. he was, yeah, he the first he nigga wrong. wanted. Yeah, yeah he, yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, homie, he ain't the first nigga. Yeah, he was really out there clapping them booty. Man, that's what, man, listen, that's, man, come on, homie, that's what made him feel so courageous to do it. Man, listen. There's no way a gay man is going to go into an all section of straight man and yell, I'm gay. He ain't going to do that. He got to know there's something over there he can get. Come on, my nigga. Right. Nigga punk, yeah. listen. Nigga punk ain't dancing at the club around a bunch of straight men. It ain't going to do it. It's going to dance around where it can fish. <laughs> that motherfucker got some, got, <laughs> yeah, the catching come before the hanging. Because that, those two spirits cannot collide. One of them flees. Right. Bunch of nigga, man, get him. Come on, let's go. Many of them dance like a woman. <laughs> Many of them shaking his ass. They gonna move away from him. Yeah. One of those, man, light and darkness don't hang together. It's impossible. So the reason I say it's good for the culture is because a young nigga normally got to go to prison to see this. Yeah. Normally to see what we seeing now, you normally have to go get five, ten years to see that OG such and such down there fucking boy. A lot of niggas done got their hearts broke, nigga. Done went down there, the nigga they looking up to laying with a boy. Or, or, or is a girl. It's a whole lot of niggas got their heart broken and get down there and see the big homie from the apartment doing something what another nigga tell him to do from upstate. Mm. Whole lot of niggas got their heart broke, homie. Yeah. Get in there and you think this nigga bad and he's saying, yes, sir, boss, to the guards. Right. Everything the guards say, dude, he ain't never bucking. He telling you, man, man, follow the rules, man. They go lock. What? Nigga, you in jail following rules? Who follow rules in jail? You been breaking rules and laws all your life. Now you getting in here. Now you don't go to lock up and do nothing, nigga. You a good boy in jail? Who do that? So I'm saying these niggas faking, homie. Loogies in the booth. These niggas try to make commissary. <laughs> these niggas ain't in there telling the police, fuck you. I ain't turning TV off. When the bailiff say, all rise, them niggas stand up. <laughs> Them niggas don't do like mad dog on good time. Stretch your leg down. <laughs> Look at the judge holding the nuts, talking, chewing gum. <laughs> judge tell him, sir, we don't chew gum my court. 
<laughs> stick it up on the seat, talk like that. Ain't no nigga doing that in court. Nigga, plead. See what you talking about? Yeah, let me go home. Man, lay, you won't try out. No, I won't try out, man. See if they'll give me 10 years. Because niggas ain't got that kind of heart and wherewithal, my nigga, to really lay their life down for what they believe. Right. What they say they believe. What they There you go. Right. What they say they believe. Listen, we see a lot of y'all commenting, and y'all are asking questions. You could ask questions. You do got to ask it in the super chat form. Send a bread. Ask the question. We will we will ask your question verbatim. Any That's question, yeah, any yeah. question y'all want to ask, yeah. I'm open. They got me here all night. Hello. Yeah, Charleston White's one of those guys that said whatever whatever y'all got to ask, y'all got to ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Something I, yeah. That, <clears throat> I'm in the glass house right now. I ain't off limits for nothing. So, so something I want to say to you is there's there's people that love you. Yeah. There's people that hate you. Yeah. But like myself, I could tell that you it really doesn't fucking matter to you. Oh. Uh, if, if they I, like you or hate I you. I haven't personally done nothing to nobody, homie. So it shouldn't matter, nigga. I ain't slap your mama. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I ain't, yeah, yeah, I ain't, I ain't thump, I ain't thump your son upside the head and tell him go in there so I can fuck your baby mom. It's some nigga mistreating your kids, nigga. Yeah, yes, yeah, you got an uncle, nigga, that's mean to your son. So, nah, homie, I ain't done nothing to nobody. I may have spoken against somebody who you idol. So, even in that faction, I'm saying to myself, this is the generation of people who, who our grandmothers and our mothers warned us about that they won't really pray and know God, that they're going to be idol worshipers. Mm, it's, some, it's some niggas that hurt you. Well, let me just say this. I once was an idol worshiper. I told you I was with Tupac. So, nigga, I, I can't repeat a biggie song. I didn't like yeah. Jay-Z. I didn't like Nas. Yeah. Nigga, I took Tupac's right. side. So it went West Coast. Nigga, I ain't never been East Coast, so I never got into East Coast rappers because of that. That divided a nation, East Coast, West Coast yeah, beef. Literally. If you think these beef between Dirk and it's dividing our babies. So when we go at a party, we go to the mall, you a Biggie fan and I'm a Pac fan, we really gangbanging on each other, homie. Basically. Off people we never met. So I'm saying, mm. yeah, because we're, we're worshiping these idols. So then when we get grown, what happened? They introduced American Idol. So they start creating idols for our children to worship. Ooh. 20 million people, call in and vote right now. <laughs> Nigga, they start playing. So our children worship these motherfuckers like gods, right. but they don't know a real God. They don't know, they can't recite the prayers at night. Our Father who all lay me down to sleep. They can't recite none of them, but they can. So the lyrics, the lyrical content is now <clears throat> governs these motherfuckers' spirits, thoughts, and behaviors. So, nigga, we don't know to have a start having threesomes till these niggas start telling us you can have threesomes. I didn't know nothing about a threesome, my nigga, till the niggas start saying you can have them in the rap songs. Right. Damn. So, yeah, yeah, nah, man. So, uh, I get it, my nigga. So what, so, what I did is I attacked the idol, which is the character, the image. He who controls images controls minds. So rap and, and, and the gangster image is now the new mind-controlling uh, tool like what the CIA use. Nigga, we all control robots to kill now. Yeah. Oof. You're talking right now. What, what is the <laughs> overall... So, so like, knowing that you have this platform now and people are listening to you, what is the message that you want to get across to the youth? Uh, fuck the youth. I ain't got no message for them motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> fuck the youth. I spent 12 years trying to get a message to the youth, homie. Uh, this youth generation will not, cannot, and does not have a message. Their ears are closed to anything that they don't idolize. They don't listen to their parents. They don't listen to the teachers. They don't listen to the coaches. They only listen to what they idol, and that's a rapper. So this generation will not have a message of young people. They will not have a message uh, they will not have a messenger. Uh, they will be destroyed. This group here, that's why you see 10-year-old kids dying. That's why if you look at, at the death toll and you look at the, 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 the youth murders, that's why you see old niggas ain't killing each other. Old people aren't dying of old age right now. They're living. We're at living our youth. Uh, we're going to spend the next 20 years uh, watching young people die like we did in the 90s. Uh, so we can purge and cleanse a, a, a new generation of people. Uh, we fed hate to this group of kids. Uh, this group don't know love. Uh, this group don't know loyalty. 
And you can't develop those concepts in, in, in such a time of uh, turmoil, uh, this bloodshed right now. You got kids, nigga, with Glock switches that ain't never been to the gun range. Uh, there's no way you can c control a Glock switch. Mm. I shot. There's no way you can control it's it. Going. Yeah. There's no way, homie. Because what happens, it, it goes up. And, 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 and kids too, they homie, you don't, you don't, you don't know how to stand the shoot. Come on, homie, you don't have the training. Uh, uh, yeah, and they, and when they're shooting, like like recently out here in Hollywood Beach, there was an altercation that went on between between two groups of people, and they shot a one year old. Yeah, and, and that is what's happening more often than not. That's why I don't do the fucking holiday celebrations. Nah, so shit. so so look at this, homie. <clears throat> if I shoot a one year old, my mama. Everybody go make me turn myself in. Nobody's going to tell me, to, nigga, you wrong, my nigga. Nigga, my brother killed the nigga. My mama made it turn herself in. Hmm. And that nigga spent 31 years in prison for that. Nigga, you killed, nah, homie, so, uh, nah, nigga, they don't even have the, they don't even have the, 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 because of technology, human life doesn't matter to them. Because mm -hmm. they are already trained killers by way of assimilation, video gaming. Video games and because, as, as see, for the last 20 years, uh, as soon as a child comes to its stages of development, understanding yes, no, don't do this. Um, mommy, I'm hungry. Mommy, I got to pee. Mommy, I got to poo-poo. Once they start understanding that, as parents... We get tired of watching this motherfucker all day. Stop, boy, don't do that. Sit down, don't do Because we want some time. So what we do? Mommy, can I see your phone? Hurry up. We can get that motherfucker a phone. And so what the phone does is, by way of technology, over so many years of, of, of engaging on the phone and watching other humans on the phone, uh, you, you, you lose human detachment. Desensitized. You're not, you, 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 you don't have yeah. no detachment to a human. Right. You're not outside playing with other children. You're not having altercations and conflicts, solving, making up, saying I'm sorry. Uh, so you're not learning how to engage other humans. So what ends up happening is the older you get, you start leaving mommy with the phone. Now you're occupied. You're not in the shit. You're in that motherfucker, quiet in the motherfucker. All the time you come out is to eat and pee. And the parents are happy now. So everybody on the phone, and this baby grows up being detached, homie. Yeah. They ain't even socializing in the house because the baby get the phone. So once the baby get bored with the phone, what do we pick up? A joystick. And now he in the room all day on the joystick on the game. But now on this motherfucker, all the games just shoot. Boom, 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 boom. boom. Everything is gory. They got real blood, look like real motherfucking heads blown off. Nigga, I, I was in my 20s before I had to shake off Grand Theft Auto, 27, 28 years old. <laughs> but then when my son got it, and he started getting into the game, nigga, I started finding myself wanting to play it like him. But I'm buying him all the games with my immature mind to help feed this propaganda of gun violence that we do. It ain't no motherfucking kids playing Sonic Hedgehog no more. Even the motherfucking wild game got fire coming out and they hitting each other. It's some fighting conflict type of shit. Yeah. So uh, we're creating these little robots. These aren't, they're, they're not like humans anymore, homie. Yeah, I, I grew up playing fucking Oregon Trail. Man, you know what uh, <laughs> that's yeah, the yeah. motherfucker I'm talking about. That yeah, Dragon yeah. Ball shit. We had a Dragon Ball yeah. generation. <laughs> Dragon Ball. Uh, uh, we, we had a, we, uh, what's them witch three bitches used to come on on the morning? Uh, they were three witches, friends, uh, Shannon Doherty, was uh, Charm, like Bewitched. Or uh, Bewitched. Yeah, yeah. So, so we had a generation <laughs> of those kids that grew up believing into dispel witchcraft shit, right? Mm. Then we had a generation of motherfuckers, uh, Homie's been call of duty like a motherfucker. Okay. Call of duty. And so when I first heard Pooh Shiesty, nigga, I said, nigga, this, that new generation, children of the corn, because nigga, they got the guns. They can rap about the guns. Nigga, they can know, they know guns. So I started observing my son, nigga. I started thinking my son was going to be a motherfucker. Nigga, he know guns. Playing that call of duty shit. Hey, mom, can I see your credit card? They spend $50 to purchase this motherfucking gun and car and get to another stage. And, nigga, they trapped in this metaverse world for years. 
Nigga, they go build them sports characters. They go through the training. Boom, boom, boom. And, and in their mind, that's they, they, so homie, no. They be trapped in that shit. That's a matrix. And then when they come out the matrix, you telling them to get a job. Now they 15, 16 years old looking over your motherfucking ass. Now they look disrespectful. So now. Right. When they, Fuck, I look like getting a job. So now when they get angry and they get upset, they go in that room, close that door, and kill in spirit. Shoot, motherfuckers. Mm. They go kill in spirit. And in their mind, the people they mad at, and they be good at it. And don't let them have the capacity to be on the headphones and talk to a motherfucker in, in <sighs> Illinois, another motherfucker yeah. in Utah. If you can go in and listen, everybody hateful. Fuck you, nigga. Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> Fuck you. Everybody hateful. You're a bitch. Nah, Even nah, the grown nah, folks nah. on there fucking mother. Everybody's hateful. Yeah, they talk the most shit, too. And, but it's like that online in the comment section. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's hateful in the Matrix. So when you plug out the Matrix and have to deal with your mother, deal with your sister. Homie, you don't have no attachment. Yeah. So that's where we at, nigga. So mm. this is the generation that you can't get a message to. They have to go through to know life got to teach them. They either got to die or go to jail. Yeah. And that's only for about 20 years. Because, nigga, you got to understand the seeds we sown. Right. Crips and Blood's been around 50 years. Rap's been around 50 years. Gang... Gangster rap been around what 20, 30 About years. Yeah. I'm I'm 46, so gangster rap been around 30 years, nigga. Them some seeds have been sown. And nobody's contended it. Nobody's rebutted. Nobody's went against it other than Miss Dolores C. Tucker. And nigga Tupac made me hate her. Dolores Tucker, you a motherfucker. Yeah. He made me hate Wonder her. Wonder why they call you bitch. Yeah. Wonder why they call you bitch. And nigga, all I she was do I, I, all she was doing was just trying to put it in the lane. Let's not play this on the radio. Let's have this this way. Let's put these. Let's not get, get rid of Queen Latifah. Let's not get rid of all the MC lights. Yeah, let's not yeah. make all these motherfuckers look Kims. Hmm. God damn. Sister soldier. Man, let's make some more of them. So that's all she was doing. And then they made us believe that she was bought out by the industry. She wasn't, homie. Right. She took what she can get to make the changes that she can make. Just like every other person that's trying to help in the community, homie, they take what they can get to try to make the changes they can make. Other than that, yeah. nigga, the changes won't get made. Right. Again, this is a notice for everybody watching. Landon, if, if they didn't hit the like button by now, if they, if they didn't share this, because we could see that shit just so y'all know, right? If they ain't share it, they ain't like it, they ain't subscribe, kick them off. <laughs> <laughs> get, Say, get, man, get them the uh, fuck out of here. <laughs> the late, great Nipsey Hussle say, if you're not congratulating, you hating. Mm. Yep. Now, Nipsey Hussle's like my favorite. Uh, how, you I, how you I, feel about Nipsey uh, in real life? Uh, yeah, I, I, I love I love uh, Earmus. Uh, yeah, Nip Nip got Earmus took out. Uh, okay. Yeah, homie, they they don't call him Nipsey over in that country because his name have a meaning. Uh, Nip was a Rolling Sixty Crip. Yeah. Earmus was a a scholar. Uh, yeah, he was heaven sent in such a short time. So I ain't, I ain't know the nigga music, homie, till after he died. Oh, shit. Yeah, nigga, I, was, I had just moved back from L.A. A lot of folks. That's the case for that's, a lot. That's somebody who motivated me throughout my, uh, my 20s. Uh, like Tupac did for me. Uh, when, when you listen to his lyrics, homie, uh, nigga, he motivated me today. Parker, you're talking about Nip. Uh, Nip, yeah. nigga. Yeah. Uh, nip, 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 nip was a was a was a spirit of Park. Mm. Uh, by way of by way of a teaching rapper, homie, he would he he was teaching, but be, because because Nip had to embrace the gang culture, and Irmis couldn't get away and escape it, because either way, he would come up dead. Right. Mm. He was in a lose lose situation. Homie, once you get into that gang culture, you can't go away and not return. You can't. They force you to return. They force your allegiance. You can never grow up and be a father. You can never be a dedicated, loyal husband that says, I don't want no part. You have to. Uh, I don't want no parts of Nipsey Hussle. Mm. I'll embrace Irmis Octagon uh, till I take my last breath. Because when I got to the funeral... 
I'm trying to see, man, why is the people in Dallas, Texas celebrating this Nipsey Hustle nigga? Right. Not out of hate. Because when I was in L.A., they really wasn't celebrating him like that, homie. I lived on Imperial and Vermont, homie, on the, on, on, and right on the borderline on the Devil Lane Bloods in the Hoover's neighborhood. I was at, So they wasn't celebrating him when he was alive. Uh, his music wasn't a phenomenon when he was alive. I tried to push so many people on his music, and nobody fucked with it. Uh, and, and because... I had, because I had walked away from the Rolling 60 gang life out of Texas and stopped embracing it as a kid, I couldn't embrace Nipsey the rapper, right? Because, I, ah, man, Rolling 60. So yeah. I, never, I never would embrace him. Right. Uh, so I went on a journey to meet Irmus. Uh, I didn't have a ticket to, to, to go to the, to the funeral. Uh, I was invited by the Rolling 60s arch enemy. The eight Trey Gangster Crips. Oh, shit. But he's an original Crip. Uh, I, I left from one of the founders of the Pauru House uh, with the eight Trey. So, all oh, this is just some ironic shit, right? So, I'm at the original founders Pauru House with an eight Trey Gangster Crip Ubering to the Rolling 60s main headquarters house to go to Nipsey's Hustle funeral. And my whole state is watching me. Mm. Uh, and I'm live the whole time. So I'm on a journey, homie. Uh, not knowing what I'm in store for. I'm smoking weed, getting high. Uh, I got on a badass, uh, a cool Muhammad Ali uh, uh, sweat. My bad, I had it with the Pumas on. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I had them motherfucking you know Pumas on. Like, cool. say, I'm ripping nip with the Pumas. The Pumas. Uh, homie, I got pictures. I Man, I think I got to see. So, uh, the rolling 60s bullied their way into the stadium. I saw the power of gang culture. Uh, I was with the founder of the rolling 60s who started the rolling 60s, uh, Cappuccino T. Manuel. Uh, I was with one of the first ladies, uh, and these are elders, homie, 60s, I'm 70 years old. I was one of the first, uh, Miss SS, one of the first rolling. So I'm riding in the car with these original Crips and the founders of this rolling 60s set. Uh, They bullied their way in. What they say, go. Get out. So uh, I had never seen a Bentley truck before. That's the first time I saw a Bentley truck. Uh, next thing you know, there go Puffy. So we're in arms reach of these people. And these are gangsters. Man, park the car over there so nobody tells them what to do. So I saw the power of something. Uh, I seen everything from every celebrity you can think of. So I'm on the floor with these people. Uh, I sit catty corner, so you got in front of the, you got like in front of the casket right there. I'm sitting catty corner on the floor, so I can see people's faces. Uh, we're in a big arena, Staples Center. Yeah. It gets lit up like a concert, but it's a casket down there. Yeah. It's a dead body in this motherfucker. Crazy. Uh, I'm from the south, so we this is a little different for me, nigga. You know, uh, they playing his song, his, his album, the whole victory lap. So the cussing, the music, it's like being at a concert. Everybody smoking weed, the lights up. Uh, when Anthony Hamilton sung his song, uh, when Lauren London spoke, uh, Stevie Wonder sung and spoke, uh, Minister Farrakhan spoke, uh, Snoop Dogg, so many people spoke. But when that seven-year-old kid, nigga, uh, Black Sam probably had the most heartfelt speech. Okay. Because he was more visibly shaken. Him, him, him and Lauren London had the two yeah, most hers, heartfelt yeah. speeches. But she, intro, but she introduced the man, Irmus, not Nip. He didn't talk about mm -hmm. the musical contents. He talked about what kind of man he was. And no, you see what I'm right, saying? So, right. nigga, that was a whole different picture painted. Right. Because I had never heard the music. So I'm going off what these I people, see. you see what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 different. Ain't nobody saying Nip but Black Sam. The father spoke, but nigga, when that seven-year-old kid got up there and said, last night, Irmis came to me in a dream, mm -hmm. and he was in heaven. Nigga, I said, I put that <laughs> man, what the fuck? Nigga, uh, I ain't no dumb nigga. How can a kid articulate this? Right. This motherfucker ain't up there lying. 
That shit just gave me chills. Woo. Yeah. Last night. Go watch it, homies. It's, it's yeah, everywhere. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. So, and then he gave a vivid, detailed description of the conversation with Irmis. He said, what's up, killer? He called me killer. So, homie, I said, man, nigga, I, man, I, man, I was rocked. I've been body rocked since. Yeah. So I pay attention to children because, nigga, that's who God's speaking through. He can't talk to an adult. Mm. The preacher can't get that kind of message to people like that kid did. Irmus didn't visit nobody else but that kid. So, nigga, I left with Irmus, nigga. So it was easy to say what I said gotcha. and what I've been saying. Nigga, because I understand how the country feels about this kid and where he's from. They hold him to high regards, and they, they don't put him on the level of a rapper. Nip keeps him on the shelf as a rapper. But nigga, if we say his whole name and learn his name, uh, he'll be in the history books. They'll, they'll, they'll write about him forever. He'll be a great poet instead of a rolling 60 Crip who rap. Mm. Even the name is just strong. That's why they give us names. Like that's why they think about the name to give it. Man, I'm gonna name him such. And that's why they. That's why your name is given so much consideration, nigga. And you wanna change it to a street name that you come on, man. <laughs> yeah. So now, nah, homie, uh, y'all getting the real me. Y'all ain't getting the character. Come on. Yeah, y'all getting the real. <laughs> me. That, that's what we aim to do Hello. over here at the Danza Project. We don't like to do the, you know, and people hate us for it. Because they want us to yeah. pull that out of people, but I don't. I don't care about that shit. To uh, be honest with you, now you I do just, have just, a lot of content that comes just, with you. Well, we can go viral right now if y'all ask the wrong questions and put a nigga in that character mode. <laughs> we we'll gonna give them what they want. Right. But I ended a a, a a great business relationship with somebody because of that. Really? Uh, they paid me for something and I delivered. Is this about the Tony the Closer? Nah, uh, okay. the, the 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 Queen Princilla. Okay, uh, I'm not familiar with who that is. Yeah, uh, I just get I'm just giving her an alley hoop. But no, nah, but but I, I had I had done a great interview with them, and it was kind of like the DJU interview. It was too positive for their audience, right? Uh, because it would have presented me in a whole different light. So uh, I could tell they wanted the character, and I didn't want to give it to them. But they paid. I, they wanted it. Right, so, right, right. So I delivered, <laughs> and and uh, I was planning to do more. Uh, but they want the character, homie, and, and it's too much substance in the man. Uh, yeah, that's why I transitioned into comedy, and, and and so I can get offline. The character stay online. Ah. Uh. Yeah, nigga Charleston on stage with stand up comedic content. Yeah. So uh, at this point, uh, people pay for the character. Right. Very few people want the man. I think it's cooler, like you were saying, the difference between Nipsey and what was it, Aramis? Yeah. And Aramis. I think being able to see that different side of Charleston White, being able to get to know Blue. Yeah. Is actually cool as fuck to me. Yeah. Like even even the the, the boy six nine, like you were saying. One thing, because because at one point we had an opportunity to get him up here. And, it didn't work out, but his point was every time you do an interview, you're six nine. You've never done an interview as Daniel. Every time you do an interview, you got weave in your hair. Yep. And you 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 giving out bags and you you doing the whole show. But what if you had the opportunity to actually be Daniel and really show people who you are and why you are the way you are and so on and so forth? Wouldn't that be dope? Wouldn't that be gold? I think for people like him that scares him away. It will. Yeah. Oh uh, he uh mm. He ain't strong as a man yet. If he come out that character, he got to go back to little boy Daniel. Right. You're going to lose more than. Yeah. 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 Uh, I was strong. I was strong as a man uh, before I showed up playing a character. Right. I had already uh, walk made through, a. Walk through. I, yeah. I had already yeah. made a choice in life to do right, uh, be right. Uh, home, I, didn't, I didn't get out the boy's home at, at, at 21 years old and started committing crimes. I ain't been in the streets, nigga. I've been a nigga trying to figure out life as a single dad, nigga. Right, right. Uh, trying to marry my baby mama so I don't have bastard kids. That don't, you know, some nigga trying to yeah, really yeah. figure out life. I ain't Do been some real shit. I ain't been submerged in the criminal elements. So, 
Snitching don't apply to a nigga like me, so I can come play snitch. Will I snitch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I'm in a situation because I'm not committing crimes, so I'm not upholding to, nigga, I ain't no nigga breaking law. Yeah. And if a nigga around me breaking law, I'm on snitch. You broke that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, am I riding around looking for lawbreakers? Sometime. Yeah, sometime I'm doing just like a Karen. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, sometime. Motherfucker ride by me on the highway going too fast. Yeah, nigga, I'd 911 the motherfucker now if I get the license plate just because. Oh, uh, yeah, I done seen some young nigga riding on the motherfucking highway, flashing them goddamn guns in a, in a video, uh, pointing them, doing that type of shit. And scared me, and I 911 they motherfucking ass, follow them through four exits so I can make sure the police get them. That could they scared me. Yeah, had they not scared me, I would have mind my business. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, now, nah, man. So, I'm all for being a law abiding citizen. Yeah. There's somebody in the comments that, that has been that They didn't pay the super chat, but they keep saying, stop it. You went to prison in 98. They keep talking about they were uh, in prison I, with I, you and shit. I, I've never been to prison. I've never in my life been to prison. Yeah, this this dude swears. He I was went. In I went. I went into the boys' home. September eighteenth was our crime we committed. Nineteen ninety one. I got out in September nineteen ninety eight. I don't have any felony convictions. I'm on camera holding a fifty cal. I'm on camera buying guns. Lil Boosie in jail for being on camera with a gun. I've never in my life been to prison. I don't have any felony convictions. Uh, when I got out the boys' home, homie, I went into a uh, a a, re a regimented inmate discipline boot camp for those 10 pounds of weed. Mm. I spent four months in the read program, five years of deferred probation, and got off two years early. I ain't been in no trouble. I ain't yeah. been in and out of jail. I ain't never spent 30 days in jail as an adult. Never. Mm. Yeah. This nigga don't know me. Because <laughs> because if he was, he would give you details. He, he would tell you he's what... He's saying you were in the Oklahoma Woodward... Whatever. What did I just say? A read program, right? Read. That's not prison. Correct. A regimented inmate discipline boot camp for kids damn near 17 to 25. Right. First time offenders program. <laughs> nigga lying. <laughs> I get your facts right. Man. Yeah, <laughs> nigga, this nigga lying. He's saying read is prison. Stop read it. ain't prison. I, when, when, when read is prison. Regid inmate discipline program is a youth boot camp. Pro program. First offender boot camp. Yeah, this ain't no motherfucking prison. Yeah, now he won't. You know what? He been lying, telling people he been to prison and was at that goddamn boot camp. <laughs> uh, no Charleston. Niggas say, no listen, you know what they had us? They had us on a prison yard, section off away from the prisoners. No contact, no nothing. We didn't, we was in our own little world in a one, two, three look, three look camp station. Away from the prison in a real boot camp environment with Marine sergeants. Mm -hmm. This nigga, he done been lying telling people he been to prison. <laughs> he he ain't been to prison. Yeah, yeah, that nigga ain't been no motherfucking prison. I hate these kind of niggas. Because this is what I know, homie. They ain't gonna let me show all these guns. I show too many motherfucking guns to be a convicted fella. I buy you go. regularly, homie. I flash some of the baddest motherfucking guns in the world. I go shoot them. You can't do that, nigga. Not if you a fella. Come on, man. So, yeah, these niggas just be talking. And you can't get no felony sponge. You have to have a pardon from your governor. Yeah. So, nah, these niggas just be online talking. I'm, some niggas say, uh, uh, I'm from here. I'm from there. Man, these niggas don't know me. What's the craziest Charleston White propaganda you've heard? Uh, that, I, uh, that I fucked my eight-year-old cousin. Oh, man. And she went to a... a, a, a a YouTuber's line. I don't even know who she is. That I was 19 years old and I fucked my eight year old. Yeah, that's the craziest shit I done heard. I didn't get out the boys' home until I was 21. Right. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That and, yeah, and I wasn't raised with my cousin. And you can't fuck no baby and not go to jail, nigga. And they online giving interviews. Yeah. But they right. but but they online giving interviews to the Crips. No other place. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, so now nah, I, I, I hear all kind of shit, my nigga. Yeah, yeah, I, can, I, I can only imagine. That yeah, yeah I, I hear all kind of shit. Oh, uh, well, think about this, homie. It's a motherfucker on trial right now suing Michael Jackson for some shit. Michael Jackson been dead 20 years. He can't give the account of nothing, and they got a whole trial going without him. So that's why I come online, my nigga. 
I want to be the nigga to come online and play whatever I want to play. Because most niggas scared to be a bad nigga online. Mm -hmm. See, niggas think they bad because they bad to other niggas. The shit that I've said to white folks, <laughs> the shit that I've said to Asians, Asian. the shit that I've said to the gay community, <laughs> the shit that I've said to Crips, the shit that I've said to Bloods, GDs, BDs, Klansmen, nigga, you can't miss me. <laughs> Right. I wanted to be the baddest nigga in America because I wanted to replace uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. And, and, and see, the reason I say that is uh, there's a federal recording of J. Edgar Hoover uh, identifying and classifying Dr. Martin Luther King as one of the most dangerous niggas right. in America. Yeah. And he was nonviolent. He preached nonviolent. He preached turning of the cheek. So if our federal government would say he's the most dangerous nigga, I wanted to replace him. Mm. Yeah, I, yeah. so I replaced him, but I'm not fucking with the white man. I don't fuck with them, but I look at us. See, I, I do what got Malcolm killed. I do what got Malcolm killed. Do you feel like a target? No, I don't think now motherfucker go get me. No, I don't feel like now at all. Uh, nigga, y'all seen our Uber here with no security? <laughs> nigga, I don't know what this is. I don't know if this some nigga high. I saw him get rat packed in. <laughs> yeah, nigga, y'all don't know what's nigga. I'm finna come to it. Man, ain't nobody gave me what y'all look like or nothing. I don't know nothing. I just come. I tell these nigga, they can book me for the killing. I show up for the killing. Stop, man. Nah, don't put that. <laughs> nigga, I'm not lying, but you gotta pay to get me. I ain't cheap. Hey. Yeah, nah, I ain't cheap. So, but nah, homie. So, uh. Now, I, I don't feel like a target, but I know I haven't told any lies, so that makes me a target. Nigga, I don't get For on For sure, it. yeah. Yeah, so, so the truth teller, nigga, and then I'm challenging black people. That's what got Malcolm killed. See, long as Malcolm was calling the white man the devil, when Malcolm started looking at what was going on with us, that's what got him killed. Man, you saying what about the messenger? Now he telling black folks, no, y'all need to stay out them liquor stores. See, no, nah, that's what got Malcolm killed, huh? So, uh, Crazy. uh I, I, I understand it, homie. See, these niggas been listening to rap. I've been reading historical books. I was just going to ask you where, you, where you get a lot of this insight Reading? From? Because the stuff you're saying, it, it's not far-fetched. A lot of it, some of it is, but some of it ain't. <laughs> a, uh, a lot of the shit that you stand on is not far-fetched. Oh, uh, man, if you know the history of this country... Uh, you would understand the things that I'm saying are not far-fetched. It wasn't too long ago, homie, niggas was hanging from trees. Yeah. And it was groups of white people standing around them, smiling, taking pictures. Yeah. Those people still alive. So it ain't, it ain't, it ain't. Homie, when you think about these niggas really killing people, then going to the studio and put all the clues and the codes in the songs, <sighs> what I'm saying ain't far-fetched. There happened, how many niggas killed FBG Duck and then went and put all the clues in a song to help the feds solve the murder? Word for word. Not just them rappers, the young niggas doing it too. So, uh, nigga, I, I, I done brought us to us. I brought us to us, nigga, in a character. Fuck you, dumbass. That's how niggas talk. Niggas ain't respectful. We're some of the most disrespectful people in our own communities, my nigga. Mm. Let us be hanging out at the store, smoking a blunt, with our shirt off, cussing and talking about the bitch we done fucked, and this elder woman get out with her grandbaby. We ain't going to change our topic. Ain't no nigga say, man, she, this woman finna right. get out. Ain't no nigga jump to open the door and say, excuse me, ma'am. When she come out with the bags and we see her going up the stairs and she keep going back and forth. Nigga, we ain't going to help her. I don't give a fuck about her. So what, what, one thing I preach, right? Because one thing I can't stand is somebody who constantly highlights the bad, right? Somebody who always telling you what's wrong. This needs to be better. Y'all ain't doing this. Y'all ain't doing that. If you could have for some type of solution to the youth and the problems and the fact that people just don't have that capability. They of have to die and go to prison. Nothing else is going to teach them. Hmm. Uh. I ask black people all the time, you tell me something good about us in the last 40, 50 years that we can be proud of and take to the ancestors. Hmm. 
We've gone backwards compared to where they moved forward to get us here. What have black people done in the last 50 years that they can stand up in the world and say, yeah, we proud, black, black and proud. We ain't got nothing we can be proud of, homie. I can't think of nothing good black people do today besides play sports. And they play that for white folks good. It ain't, we ain't good no more. It's some individual good people, but collectively, nigga, we fucked up. Yeah. Tainted. Poisoned. And we cannot keep continuing making babies, nigga. This group have to be destroyed, nigga. Yeah. We have to be wiped out, homie. Because of the hearts of these, this group of black people, homie. We too hateful. We don't even love each other. We don't like white people. We don't like nobody. We have become the new slave master. The mm. white boy used to be Ooh. mean to everybody. When you look at the old movies, when the white man go to everybody establishment, what do he do? He complains. Hey, get in here. Get me a waitress. Knock his drink on the table. Spill shit. Unruly. Mm -hmm. That's us now, my nigga. Every establishment mm. we go in. We just like that white boy used to be. And they are starting to be like our ancestors. The quiet ones sitting back looking. Our ancestors used to didn't talk in public. They didn't want to be noticed by white people. We want to be noticed by white people. Yeah, yeah there, there's no way that that, that, uh, that white party that them niggas went to, that they are supposed to allow them images to be sent out to us, homie. Two white boys sandwiching a nigga, and they oh, thigh baby. to thigh, butt to butt, nut to nut. Hip to hip, pelvic to pelvic. <laughs> Yo, you know, shout out, shout out, Big K in the building. I don't know if you know who Big K is. Nah, that's, nah, that's, I, I, I don't know who that is. Right now, that's the most phenomenal battle rapper in the world. I already, he man, said he's up, got DK? three rounds of fire for you. Uh, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, three yeah, I rounds of that battle <laughs> yeah, rap ring. Yeah, I try. I, I, I think all rappers are dumb. Yeah, yeah, I think any nigga that can make rhymes, rhyme and go together uh, is not intelligent. Uh, they can't teach a class nowhere. And all them niggas can't talk loud in the house. So I don't, I don't get no rapping nigga no time. Yeah, damn. Yeah, yeah. Now, how I think all rapping niggas stupid and dumb. That's how they can make their words rhyme. Because intelligent people can't do that. <laughs> intelligent people cannot concoct words and make them rhyme together. <laughs> they can't. Kinda Albert gotta, Einstein gotta, couldn't do it. Uh, Bernie Madoff couldn't do it. No, no people who can really think can damn, really make damn, noise. Damn, damn, I can't let you slander my guy. Say, homie, like listen, that, homie, I think, I think all rappers are dumb, my nigga. Look, show me one that's smart somewhere other than Jay-Z, but he had to cross his partner to get where he at. Jay-Z intelligence didn't get him now. Dame Dash intelligence got them now, and he mm. played the backroom deal. So I don't think rappers are intelligent, homie. They some of the most. If you was to take the rapper, and stood them all amongst the world's strongest men, you would see they the world's weakest men. They can't fix nothing. They don't lead good in the households. They're not good fathers. See, I don't, I don't spend my time with a nigga that can rap my nigga. I'm daddy at the house. I'm Mr. Charleston in the community. If I get mad and say something online, nigga, the mayor them go call me. Did you have a rap history? Never. Or? I've never tried to rap, never wanted to be a rapper. I've always admired them because I thought they were sharp. Only to realize they the dumbest motherfucking niggas in the group. <laughs> they dumber than a janitor. Because don't none of them do nothing with what they got. Nigga rapping is for a nigga just like dribbling basketball that won't never make it to the NBA. Just dribble the ball for the rest of your life, nigga. It's a hobby. So I'm not into a nigga that think he can turn this hobby into a career. Homie, I'm a thinker. Rappers ain't thinkers. Nowhere in our history have these niggas been thinkers. I'm a thinking man. I like to read books. Nigga, when I was locked up and them niggas was slamming Domino, nigga, I was reading Danielle Steele love novels. Mm -hmm. Nigga, I went to college to try to become a lawyer at Texas Wesleyan University as a pre-law student. 83 credit hours toward a bachelor's degree. I'm in a pre-law program and just dropped out to go start a, a youth organization that's highly recommended to all 254 counties throughout my state. Mm -hmm. The old niggas taught me the rapping mind is a dumb mind. The gang banging mind is a dumb mind. The football playing is a dumb mind. The basketball playing is a dumb mind. The spades player is a dumb mind. All them niggas is the dumb minds. So we don't entertain them niggas' minds because none of them have the business mind. Mm -hmm. Didn't you hear all I created from just talking on Android? 
these niggas ain't got, they been rapping forever. So you are an Android fan, not iPhone. No, no, I, they, they shamed me to get an iPhone, but I got, I got Android. I got three uh, iPhones uh, and one Android. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I got that. So, so they shamed me. So I've been taught by the old niggas not to respect these minds. Yeah. These are the dumbest minds in our race. They're not the scientists. They're not the builders. Mm. They're not the creators. They're not the, they don't, can't produce nothing. They can't manufacture anything. They don't know how to get to the United Nations. Nigga, I know how to get to the United Nations. Why you think I talk nigga nation talk? I got a flag. Yeah. I'm playing past the rap niggas. They still in their feelings because they like rapping. I like talking. It's the difference. You can listen to me forever. You got to skip at least two or three of their songs. <laughs> Yeah, so nah, I'm, I ain't, nice and I, I ain't being disrespectful. I just don't entertain rap niggas. I don't take them serious. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. So, so something that you that. said earlier that I wanted to go back on, you were talking about the minds of these 12-year-olds and yeah. how they're not developed yet, and you know they got all, these, uh, all this criminal activity, but they're not ready to be sentenced yet. What do you think about the 12-year-olds and the, and the kids that are, are even younger that they're allowing to transition with the transgender community? Uh, uh, Shout out to uh, uh, yeah, Florida governor. Uh, uh, he's the only politician, uh, him and Donald Trump, uh, two of the only politicians that's saying uh, they will enact uh, an, an executive order to make it illegal uh, for children to transition uh, uh, under this age. Wow. Uh, you don't know who you want to be at 12. Yeah. Yeah, you don't know because... Yeah, you still want to be Ninja Turtles and shit. Yeah, so, <laughs> so normally most... Gay kids, somebody living through them. Somebody living through these gay kids. They ain't gay. They don't know what they. They don't know what they like because you can't form a. a, a, a you can't form a lifelong decision at twelve because you lack the, the prefrontal cortex of your brain, right? right? So that prefrontal cortex in the front of your brain is empty and blank. So when you ask that motherfucker, hey, you like boys? You don't know. As it starts to grow, you can start to logically. Once it connects, you can definitely say, yeah, I like this. Uh, but not as a kid. Not as a kid. Nah, you can't make a lifelong decision, homie. That's why many people advocate for children when they do horrible and horrific things. Since Yana, I know they did this at 12, 13, but if you place them in the right environment, you put them in the right situation, they won't be like this at 30. There's evidence of it. There's a guy named Charleston White. There's a guy named Eric Alexander. There's a guy, there's, there's, a, there's evidence of this. There, there's evidence of guys changing. Uh, Mob Jane, many niggas was murderous motherfuckers over there in death row. Now they loving grandparents. <laughs> so they can change, homie, the yeah. right environment, the right situation with the right resources. Information. So, so yeah. information. Mm -hmm. So you don't let no kid make now motherfucking decisions with their genitals. Mm. They can't give consent to have sex, so how can they give consent to cut it off? Mm. It don't make sense. So that's somebody want to live through children, you know, like the daddy who couldn't make it to the league, forcing his son to play football all his life, <laughs> and he grew up, nigga, to play the violin. Daddy hurt like a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, word. Shout out DNA Tooth in the building. Make sure, again, if you're watching, you hit that like, subscribe button, you're pressing the share button, and when you're asking questions, you hit the super chat. Do all that shit. What do you think about um, Boosie saying that he he wants no problems with you? Like you have a you you know Boosie from the past, right? Nah, I don't know him at all. Okay. Nah, I don't have, I don't, I don't personally. So why know why him. does he want no problems with you? Uh, gee, he's smart. Yeah, he's smart, <laughs> the motherfucker. Now, uh, uh. I don't know, man. Weren't you on like uh, FaceTime with him? He called you when he got out or some uh -uh. shit. Oh, okay, I, I saw nah. a video of him in uh -uh. the car. Like, nah, nah. Uh, we've uh, by, by way of pimping Ken, uh, we've had some indirect uh, communication. I think Boosie was having a, a autobiography that was coming out like maybe two years ago, and uh, pimping Ken uh, hollered at me, uh, and, and, and he was gonna be on my podcast, uh. The situation happened with this fight. Uh, my people reached out to his people. We talked. Uh, me and him didn't talk directly, but, you know, he listened. Uh, he didn't know if he was being recorded. So you can kind of tell he was real kind of. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, his homeboys feel like I called the police on Tootie when he got arrested in Austin. Uh, and I'm saying, man, I don't even know that nigga was in Austin. 
Yeah, I, I, Nick can't call the police in two different cities, and the police. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that just don't work that, like that. Yeah, yeah no. Nah. So uh, <laughs> that's a prank call as far as anybody. Uh, man, Boosie know that I got law enforcement connection. He know that. Uh, he know I'm cool with them people uh, out there in Atlanta and the Fulton County. Uh, yeah, he know that. Yeah, he know uh, I'm a big fan of Miss Fanny Willis. Uh, and, and, and yeah, yeah, they tune in to me. So he, he know that, uh, any rapper, uh, that's in tune and involved with the streets from, from his standpoint would be smart just to ignore me, homie, because nigga, I really got law enforcement friend. The police really watch my shit. Uh, homie, listen, the FBI really stopped me one day riding, shit. uh, after I bought that 50 cow. Mm. I got a real motherfucking, I'm one of the only niggas in North Texas got a 50 cow. Yeah. <laughs> t- some shit, nigga. Yeah, some so, shit uh, right there. So, so uh, but somebody had made a call after that DJ Academic shit and said that I had like three Asian bitches kidnapped and held hostage. That sounded but like a joke. It was, but yeah. they got to take it serious, yeah, nigga, cause, because when they look on my Facebook page, I got them. And then that day I had been pulling out all the guns and yeah. showing them. Uh, yeah, I had been, yeah, I had went in the character real tough on that motherfucker. Uh, so, yeah, they stopped me, homie. Uh, What's strange about that whole, I won't call it a relationship, I guess, whatever you exchange if you want. I feel like y'all could be cool. I feel like y'all could be friends. Who? You and Boozy. Yeah, we can. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we can. I've been trying to be his friend. He don't want to be my friend. You know, I'm like the little girl that like you picking on you because I like you. <laughs> Yeah, nah, <laughs> homie. Uh, I was a little disappointed, homie, because I thought he was a real. I thought he was more, more, more of a thoroughbred than than, than what we see at times. Yeah. Uh, so I always said, man, Boosie should have stayed off the internet, nigga. That nigga would have been, yeah, he would have been more mythical. Uh, mm. Same with Jay Prince. They shouldn't have never got on the internet, homie. They just should have stayed back. <laughs> Did, yeah, nah, man. So uh, now nah, I really fuck with him, homie. I fuck with his lyrics, so I'm really just fucking with him. Yeah. Uh, and I done sent him video and, and let him know, nah, nigga, I'm just fucking with you, nigga. Uh, I done, we got, we got some mutual friends. Shout out to yeah. Wayne Grimes. So now we got some mutual friends, homie, and everybody tell him now, nah, but, but because the position he take from the streets, That's he can't you. cross over here and fuck with a nigga to say he called right, the police and right. snitching. Uh, and, 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 and I've said, and, and, uh, out of my youth advocacy, homie. Uh, I've said some things that 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 probably emotionally have affected him behind Marlo Mike. Uh, okay, that's a real sensitive subject yeah. with him. Uh, the uh, yeah, cause you know, cause yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, uh, b- because w- that never goes away. So here I am online talking, nigga. That never goes away. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Say less. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking around it, but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of crazy shit that goes on in the industry, especially lately. And what do you think about, um, you know, because we've lost a lot of uh, phenomenal artists in the industry. I know you. I know you say you don't like rappers, but what do you I like th- rap music. I, okay. I don't. I don't. I don't get into the rappers themselves. Yeah, I was watching. I've been watching your lives and shit. I forgot. Yeah, you I, were listening I, to somebody on the plane the other day. Yeah, I listen rapping. to rap music. Yeah, but I, I don't get it because I know their characters. There was a time when when they had platforms like these, uh, and and, and that's why I'm so that's why I'm so relaxed, uh, and, and I'm not in such a rush to 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 end this interview. Appreciate that, uh, by the way. Yeah. I, I really want to make it last as long as I because uh, not often do platforms allow uh, the character to come introduce the man. Uh, that's what Yo MTV, MTV Raps was good for with Fab mm. Five Freddy. Yeah, show it, you. You, get, I, you. You know what's crazy is we, we, we used to be hated for this. You know what I'm saying? They for used real? To, yeah, because they, they didn't like it. They're like, oh, well, you're not asking the right yeah, questions. I'm like, but I want to know. You want to know the man. I come in here and I sit down and, like, I've I built my own empire. You got a nice motherfucker, you know, too. I appreciate you. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I've built my own empire, my own life. And when I sit down, I'm trying to, I'm trying to learn the person. Yeah. Because what you do is, is clearly inspirational. Whether people hate you or love you doesn't really matter. Uh, I, you got I, a voice. You use that voice and you're speaking to the people and you're able to have that reach. Right? These you, are uh, things that I I, I want to learn, I want to understand, and when I sit in here, that's how you sell I'm the next album, though. But, but 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 if them niggas did that, that's how you keep selling your next album, right? 
uh, one of the greatest games T.K. Kirkland told me, man, is, man, uh, don't rush out there to go be funny. Man, go introduce yourself to the people. Tell them how you got here. Mm. Tell them you just get started. That way it don't make it so hard to be a comedian. Yeah. Right. They, they get to grow with you now. Now your fans get to know you. Yeah. So hmm. I, I, I learned that concept because when you look at American Idol, when you look at The Voice, when you look at all these, uh, uh, what's that, America's Next Got Talent? Yeah, talent shows. When you look at all these talent shows and they put the talent up there, when they get us down to the last 10, 12 people, they take you back to their hometown. Same roots. Tell you how they are, how they got started. And that's what make you vote for them. Right. Because now they're coming out of the character. So after the, every performance, they start talking to the person. What do you think about that? Oh, I was nervous. Now you buying into the person, the concept. Mm -hmm. They used to do that, homie. That's why studio gangsters wasn't shamed. That's why Ice Cube was never shamed. He was a studio gangster. That's why Tupac was never shamed. He was a studio gangster. It was okay to be a studio gangster because when you done the interview, they got the man. Right. Homie, and they took that away from us. And so now, and, 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 and so now, and so now, since we don't get to know the man, we never get to clap for the man, we never get to celebrate the man, these guys almost have to crash out so we can keep admiring and idolizing them in their character. In that character. Now, Man. what do you think about the death of Takeoff and the, the Jay Pritz involvement and all that shit? That's a tough one. Yeah, <laughs> homie, because uh, I had a viral video of somebody that was there. Uh, they, they kept blowing my phone up the next day, and I secretly recorded them. And... Uh, yeah, I think they've been interviewed by the police and everything, homie. Uh, mm -hmm. He was one of the niggas who was called uh, to come put the bad dice down because that's his game. Uh, he described uh, that they, they, they young man's death. And, and what he described to me, uh, he described a man who was at peace in amongst of turmoil. Uh, yeah, he wasn't nowhere involved in it, never spoke, say were real quiet, uh, almost as if he was waiting. Uh, so it was a real surreal description that he gave to me. Uh, it gave me chills. I secretly recorded it. Uh, man, that nigga done disappeared, homie. Damn. Yeah, he says, uh, so maybe I was wrong for secretly recorded, but I gave it to his family. Uh, and and uh, I gave it to, uh, shout out to Sykes Nation. Uh, he, he's a uh, Lamigo a manager. Uh, it gave it gave them uh, it gave them some comfort to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It it, it uh, yeah, it gave them some comfort, homie. Uh, they I they needed to hear that. Yeah. yeah. That was a tough one. That's deep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can't find that video nowhere. Uh, and that nigga done disappeared. Uh. Yeah. Uh, that's that's terrifying how that shit works, man. That's terrifying. <laughs> sure. Now, now, a question I got. Oh, we don't get you. to we, we don't get to decide when we die, homie. We don't get to decide when we're born. We mm. don't get to pick our parents. Uh, we don't get to pick how we enter into this world. We don't get to choose the circumstances. We don't get to choose the the, the conditions. We don't get to choose the environment. So, understanding that, uh, we don't get to pick how we leave either. Mm. We now, just know we now, got to go. Now, you say you read right. a lot. Yeah. Right. And you have a lot of wisdom. So the first thing I want to know is, how did you obtain this wisdom throughout life? Like, was there somebody special in your life that, that told you to, to uh, do this? Or was it uh, the OGs back in the day? Uh, my grandmother's still alive, 83 years old. Uh, my grandfather died, uh, who was married to my grandmother uh, in his 80s. He was still alive. Uh, so I've been soaking up game from what I describe as the old niggers. Mm. <laughs> Because that's what they was called. And, and they take pride in being niggers. They take pride in the word nigger. It's not a shameful word. Uh, it's a word that we've, we've taken and identify ourselves as because we don't have another name to go off of. Uh, it was a name that was given to us, and they never took it away. They still call us nigger. Make one of them mad enough. Yeah. Uh, so... 
I got a I got a a, a mentor who's like my father, uh, who's been in my life for like the last fifteen years. Uh, he's seventy eight years old, born nineteen forty five. So I I've been right. sitting amongst I elders, homie, listening. Uh, those that's so old, they're not offended by the word nigger. It's their children who are, because they're not niggers. Uh, niggers couldn't read or write, but they could grow food. They couldn't do calculus. They couldn't do algebra. They couldn't do pre-algebra, but they can do uh, the metrics and the measurements on a foundation to build a house. Mm. Uh, the people who was called nigger didn't speak proper English, uh, but they stayed married with all their family together. They could fix tractors. Uh, they, could, they could count money. They had land. They had uh, goats. They had chickens. They, they ate out their backyard, and they wasn't dependent upon uh, the government or nobody else helping them or giving them anything. And they couldn't read none of the books that was in the library. So here we come, the, the, the black, the Negro, the African American, who can read everything, can speak all the English language, who know everything, know history, but we don't know how to grow food. We can't build a house. Uh, we don't know how to fix nothing. We're right. dependent upon something. Some break down in the house, we got to call somebody. call somebody. If the white man get mad at us and cut all black folks' life off and say, I ain't getting, we don't know what to do. If, if Walmart closed down and say, or the grocery store say, hey, we're we only opening on Tuesdays, Trouble. we don't know what to do. The niggas knew what to do. Not only did the niggas knew what to do, they had vibrant communities. Rosewood, right out here in Florida. Slocum, Texas. Black Wall Street. Tulsa, Oklahoma. So these people had vibrant communities with, with businesses, banks, dentist office, doors, movie theaters, but they couldn't read really. And they was dependent upon one another buying and exchanging from each other. So you, you have a group that came along and said, man, I ain't no nigga. I can read. I can write. I ain't ignorant. I don't wear coveralls. I got a suit. Matter of fact, I got four suits. I'm highly educated. I'm a Negro. They're dependent. They need a job to live. Mm. The niggas said only people who need a job is the people who don't know how to fish. Mm. Those are the people who have to get up and go find a job. They don't know how to fish. They can't hunt. So then you got another group come along and say, I'm black and I'm proud. They didn't want to be Negro in color. I'm black and I'm proud. The Negro in color... Wanted to put his best suit on and stop eating at the mom and pop and go eat at Luby's. Red Lobster. Because he thought it was better. Because they took the signs down. So we, the niggas lost there because they children, the Negro and the colors and the blacks, wanted to go to the white man's stadium and didn't want to hang out in the old hot parks where the Negro League was. Okay. Mm. They wanted to go into the stadium. You know, they want to go high five LeBron James. So they started rejecting the niggas. No, mama, I don't want to be no nigga. I ain't worried. I don't want to work on the farm. I don't want, I'm going to sell the land and move to the city. So the niggas lost everything because of their Negro and colored children. Here come the blacks and the mm -hmm. African Americans. What we do, we start rejecting the Negroes. That Dr. King shit. That civil rights shit. Fighting for rights. Man, we got enough rights. We stopped fighting for rights. So we start rejecting them. We start saying, oh, that, that Jesus you got on the wall, oh, that's the white man Jesus. But it worked for them. Everything that the people had before us worked for them. It got their motherfucking ass out of slavery. Whatever God they were praying to, it finally got their ass out of slavery. Then it come along, whatever God they were praying to got them some rights. Now all of us have our own gods. We ain't got a goddamn thing. We Hebrew, we Muslim, we did. We, we ain't got nothing. But all of them had the same God down there. So here come, after the, after the black and I'm proud, what we got? The real niggas, the street niggas, oh, shit. the gangster niggas, the hip-hop niggas, the gang-gang niggas. So now 
What are black and I'm proud. So now, no, nigga, we rejecting everything before us. Yeah. What you think coming after us, nigga? When we see any 10-year-old little king shooting dice. What y'all think coming after us? Yeah. And we ain't got nothing to correct nothing. What's coming after us, my nigga? Some people, they have to be enslaved. Damn. Because they're already digital slaves. They're online every day, not making no money. You are a digital slave. We are making money off your time and your energy rather than the backs of your labor. Mm. Everybody is. And everything is going to technology. So when the AI come in, what you think you're going to be? Just a nigga looking as a slave, not making no money because the AI is going to be making money. All the people at Walmart been fired because they got the check-in, check-outs. Yep. But you're going to be on your phone. Why you think so many platforms are starting to monetize and pay now? Content creation. Snapchat is for to start paying. Content creation. Yeah. Nigga, they starting to put content creation in schools and trade schools next to barbering and, and, and hairstyling. No way. What? Huh. Yo, do y'all hear the gems that are being dropped tonight? Yeah. If y'all aren't hitting that like button, the subscribe See, button. See, they want the character, <laughs> man. No, they want to fuss and cut. Nah, they but, don't but, want but, I, but <laughs> nah, I, I, this is it, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? For me, this is it. This is what it's all about. Yes, sir. I feel like if we could educate the youth, if we could educate people in general, if we could speak to people in general so they stop thinking that it's, it's all a gimmick is, is what's most important for me. Let me just say this. It's not that uh, I don't want to educate them. I know we got to do more than just educate them to change the, the, the we're not trying to stop nothing because we can't stop it, but we can change the trajectory of it yeah. because we change the trajectory with this music, right? So listen, we cannot stop the ones that got to go to prison because of the home life, where they became, how they were raised and where they were raised. But what we can do, niggas like me and you, when we meet these little niggas, for however long we got these little niggas that's going to see us and fuck with them, we show them the best of us. We show them the best of us so you can equip them for this journey. Empower them, nigga. Because there's some things they're going to need to make it out of prison and still come back with the good mind that I done helped save by teaching you what's right and wrong, my nigga. I can't stop it. I don't know what you done been through, little homie. So what I'm going to do is, nigga, I'm going to help equip you for this journey. It's just like a soldier warrior. You nigga, make sure you got the right boots. He got his That's canteen right. to put his water in. He got his, you, so you oh, yeah. equip the young nigga, my nigga. Right. Teach him right from wrong. Do people reach out to you in, in an attempt to join that kind of effort? All the time. And, and I do. Every city I go to, I work with children. I say that because a lot of people would be scared to, just uh, because of the criticism and all the other stuff that comes with co-signing Mr. White, right? Uh, well, I, I do a lot in the, in the communities. Uh, the real boots on the ground, people get it. Mm. Yeah, the real boots on the ground, people get it. Uh, the people that work from afar uh, is a little hesitant. I just lost a big contract. Uh, about a month ago with uh, San Bernardino County Probation Department. Uh -huh. I had landed a huge contract, homie, to teach and train uh, at their juvenile facilities. <coughs> but because of the internet persona and, and the character that I play from day to day, yeah. uh, I lost that contract. And it broke my heart. Yeah. Because then I started thinking, uh, it ain't worth it. And then I went to sleep and had a vision and said it is worth it. Because I have one of the largest youth audiences in America. Wow. Yeah, I, I have, uh, because of Say Cheese TV, homie, uh, I have one of the largest youth audiences in, in America. That's why I'm so big on TikTok. Right. So uh, I sacrifice a lot working with government agencies to, to go in and teach uh, and train uh juvenile county probation departments but it also because i i sacrificed that in return i gained the hearts and the ears and the minds of our youth mm. uh 
Yeah, homie, I I I I, I do a lot of public speaking. Still, uh, I get invited to uh, the events where the mothers have buried their sons. I get invited yeah. to the Stop the Violence rally. So those people aren't afraid. It's only the hip hop community, those that embrace the hip hop culture, they're more reluctant and hesitant to to invite me. But from a com- community standpoint, I partner with, with different city mayor's offices. Uh, okay. Yeah, because most people can see past the persona. If you listen long enough, it, it, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. More, more people need to meet you, man. I don't know if I've ever seen an episode or a, a podcast where people gave Charleston White their flowers for speaking up on a lot of this shit. Yeah. But um, I think it needs to happen. It needs to be more of a common thing. And and I don't want to cut your money short because, you know. The, <laughs> well, the, the, uh, the <laughs> well, this is th- this what I'm learning. Uh, that's how you stay in this game a long time, homie. You have to come from behind the character and let your people know yeah. who this man is. Because if we would have had platforms like these, R. Kelly wouldn't have got away this long. Mm. Hello. If R. Kelly, if we would have had platforms like what we got right here, there's no way he could have operated this long. Right. Because he would have had to come from behind this character that was playing good. Piper. Come on, homie. Mm. So crazy. Uh, that's what made Ali great. Yeah. That's what made Ali great, homie, because he had to come from behind who Cassius Clay was and not go into the military. Uh, he used to walk his kids to school. The people used to can touch him. Yeah. He was, he, yeah. It changed everything. Same, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and, and even somebody who's a little bit more current, Andrew Tate. Come on, homie. At first glance, even I was like, I don't know about this guy because he was saying some some controversial shit. He was shaking up the room. I hated that son of a bitch. But come to find out, the more you hear him speak, the more you get to know what the fuck he's really trying to tell I, people. I just started to listen to him two months ago, homie. I never heard no speech. I would hear people say things about him. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I watched five Kevin Samuels uh, videos. Mm-hmm. Uh, I became great friends with one of his best friends, which is Anton Daniels. Right. Uh, so he and I became great friends. Uh, y'all got to get him on the podcast. Uh, sure. But uh, just what maybe three days ago, mm-hmm. I've heard a I, I heard an Andrew Tate video, and that nigga rocked my soul. Say some shit. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, that nigga rocked my soul. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he, he. So that's my mind, my will, and my emotions. So he had all, he had all three of those elements, mm. uh, with his words. Uh, and he didn't start out like that, is what I'm saying. Uh, I didn't start out like this either, homie. Right. Uh, I was right. frustrated. I was wanting to hate black people because of our conditions. Mm. You know how so many black women that really want to hate black men oh, yeah. because of what black men have done and what they've seen done. So they want to hate, homie. Uh, I, I, I get it. But because I never learned how to hate, and I was never taught hate, I could never develop it. So I would express it. Hateful shit. Man, I hate you. But uh, I could never tap into it. And because I couldn't, I would secretly pray in the shower and say, uh, God, don't let my heart be hardened toward my own people. Yeah, that's deep. Yeah, I wanted to hate black. I wanted to sell out, nigga. I want, man. I swear I did, homie. I want, I but uh, I didn't know how. And so uh, the old niggas from the streets, uh, they called me up and said, uh, "Man, I've been watching you." And uh, these kids over here in Stop Six is not no swimming pool. They don't have a playground. They don't have nowhere to get wet. They don't have nothing. They fingernails dirty. He said, uh, I went and met with him that day. And uh, I told him, I said, Pops, I had just got through reading uh, the five points principles of the Black Panther Party. And so all that was in my brain. And, and, and one of the concepts uh, that Huey P. Newton, uh, one of the formulas, homie, that you can go to any hood and, and gain uh, leverage is feed, clothe, educate. Okay. That's that's how you catch them. That's how the white man catch them before you hang them. Mm. 
Feed, clothe, clothe, educate. Educate. Because the catching come before the hanging. So that's how I caught my people, homie. I showed up in the mm-hmm. hood after the old man uh, made out a cry and told me what the hood needed. And he the, he the godfather to us. He the, he, he the, he the minister. Yeah. Uh, spent 33 years in feds. Uh, if you a snitch, you can't be around him. And I'm his baby. <laughs> so everybody in the streets know that, homie. So, uh, so I can play whatever I want to play. What's so, the name of that book? Uh, which... The Black, the Black Panther, Panther book. Uh, was it ten point principles? Five with five or ten points? It's okay. five. Ten, five points. Five ten points. points. I see ten points. It's ten points. Yeah, ten point principles. So yeah, once I read that, homie, and understood the concept, so feed, clothe, educate. It's nothing that I can do for you if you're hungry. When you get through, when I get through giving you this great motivational speech, you spend your eight hours at school, mm-hmm. and you walk out of these school doors, and you got to go back to being hungry. Everything that I said and done for that time, I've lost you. Right. If you need clothes, homie, you come to school. You can have all the desires in the world to make right choices and decisions. But if you ain't got the right good clothes, nigga, you can't. Yeah. You're not educated. So I can feel it. Yeah. Right. So, so, uh, so that's one of the first things a nigga do when he go to the hood, homie. Nigga, I look at these little nigga shoes. I start from the feet up. Nigga, I look at these nigga shoes. When I'm in the school I go talk to, nigga, I go find a little nigga with the raggedy shoes. For one, I know he the toughest. And nigga, I sneak, hey, nigga, go get you some shoes. Nigga, next time he see me, nigga, I'm like the rapper. Yeah. I do that to every young nigga, nigga. So then once I get him, if he take me home and nigga, I see he ain't got nowhere to sleep, next time he see me, I'm going to buy my air mattress. And I'm going to tell him, nigga, honor it every day so it don't take up all that space over there. I'm going to teach him how to be responsible with it. Nigga, for long, I catch him with three or four niggas. Nigga, y'all got a horticulture and landscaping company. I'm going to buy you a lawnmower, get two wheels. I'm going to get some gloves, some, some, some trash bags, and some high village bit of the best. Nigga, y'all start walking around here cutting grass. Nigga, that's the feed, clothe, educate. Educate. Uh. That's how they call me Mr. Charleston in the hood, my nigga. And I ain't asking white folks to help us. I'm threatening to call the police on the drug dealers, niggas, to help me. That's where the snitching came from. Mm-hmm. If you, you niggas see me getting away bikes over here every Christmas, nigga, and y'all selling dope, okay, don't give me none next year then. I'm gonna, yeah, yeah, nigga, that's where I did. I'm going to shut this shit down from. I start extorting the hood. Like but, but if you, but, <laughs> but, hood. but nah, homie, but, but, but I got that from the old niggas. That's what the Black Panther Party used to do. Burn your dope house down, all that. But I noticed when I used to watch the movie Mac, that's what they did in the, in the end. They were kidnapping the drug dealers, the pimps. Forcing them niggas to get off hair run. I'm, I'm that new it. That, yeah, nah, homie. I, we we going to start burning them down in a little bit. We're going to start going to war like the movie OG. The o, yeah, we're going to start doing yeah. that. We're going to have to. We're going to have to have a civil war amongst the good and the bad in our race. To see which one of us will spearhead our next movements. Because right now, nigga, we all bad. Everybody gangster and killer. Everybody pointing a gun. So I'm saying, okay, nigga, where the niggas that can read books? Where the niggas that can spell? Where the niggas that can play the flute? And we ain't going to make him a shooter. What about the nigga so good and mad, he going to be our accountant, our tax guy? Why we got to make him the shooter, too? Why all of us got to be shooters, my nigga? Right. Why can't none of us be scared sometimes? Homie, do y'all know the best part of the movie in Boys in the Hood is? What's that? When Trey got out the car. Mm. And the next morning, <laughs> and the next morning, Doughboy and them didn't shame him when he hollered at him. Still treated him like they were partners. <laughs> they didn't shame him, homie. They let him get out the car. He pulled over and let the nigga. That's the best part of the goddamn movie, my nigga. Yo, finally, somebody did it right. And they, they, they sent that super chat money. They say, Urban Legend, shout out to you. Respect to Charleston. Is Charleston White still running for office in his hometown? Or is his schedule too busy due to Live Nation? Yeah, my schedule too busy due to Live Nation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 56 cities, man. So, uh, they... they they took a chance on me, my nigga. Uh, nobody knew if I was a loose cannon. Nobody, you know, they, of course they do their homework. 
Believe me, they do their homework. Oh, yeah. Uh, but they don't know if I get on stage, if if I'm going to say something crazy or wild. Or, uh, but they did their homework, and they took a chance because they honor what the brother who brought me in. No other celebrity put their arms around me and embraced me, my nigga. As funny as I was trying to be, uh, as entertained as I had became, nobody said, man, let's, let's help him. Mm. Uh, in my mind, that's what they supposed to do. Nigga, when you see a young nigga with some game, you don't just leave him out there. Yeah. Young nigga coming to the jail, they don't just, nah, come here, honey, you pull him up to speed. Yeah. So in my mind, that's what they were supposed to do. T.K. Kirkland came, right? So Live Nation said, okay, we'll let him host. Uh, nigga, I host like a motherfucker. But there's a difference between hosting and being a stand-up comedian. Nigga, that MC. People don't notice. They don't get it. Only certain people do. Yeah. Why you think, nigga, certain motherfuckers get to host the Grammys after doing stand-up comedy? Everybody want to graduate to the MC. Nigga, I done graduated to the MC and then skipped all the steps. And so, because uh, T.K. Kirkland and, and, and those who believe in me uh, want me to have longevity in this, nigga, they took me back to the first start, to the starting line. Nigga, I don't want a whole 56 cities. My nigga, I ain't ready. <laughs> Straight up. I ain't ready, homie. Even though I'm good. Yeah. I ain't ready, homie. So, uh, nigga, I'm... Learning stand up still. Yeah. So put me third or fourth, man. Yeah, <laughs> nigga, let me come home before. So uh so now I can grow, now I can learn. And so nigga, they keep adding me to more and more dates. So they like what they see. Uh they ask me to quit smoking weed on camera. I stop like a motherfucker. <laughs> now I'm minding. Uh because I'm showing people, homie, if you give me a script, I can follow rules. Right. Yeah, I'm hard headed, but I'm teachable. <laughs> Uh. So let me say this real quick. If you're watching, again, the, the message is too dope for everybody that's watching. There's a couple hundred people watching right now live. Do me a favor. If you fuck with what you're seeing, take this moment to share it. Share it yeah. on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Share it on Twitter. Share it on Instagram. And make sure you hit that like button because that boosts our algorithm too for people to get this type of a message. If you, If y'all aren't doing it, a lot of people are missing out on a message that's so dope. If Trying you fuck with the message, people. well, they don't do fuck with y'all if they don't. If a motherfucker ain't yeah. sharing your shit, they really don't fuck with you. Right. I share it just because because I understand uh, every share breaks your, breaks you into the algorithm. Yeah. Uh, one of the first things I said is, "You guys are in my algorithm, so you guys have you're, you're in somewhere." Right. Uh, because we had Jim Jones up here and shit. You know? Nah, I'm, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I seen Jim. Well, you you guys was popping up before Jim. Uh. Let's go. And and and, Let's and, go. and and because of the quality of the production, nigga, I just automatically assumed, nigga, y'all was big, big, big oh, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we all the uh, way. <laughs> so nigga, the whole time I'm flying here, it is not dawning on me that nigga, I'm fucking with y'all. Right. <laughs> till the, till I get that. here. So <laughs> so uh so my energy changed. Because nigga, I'm in a house. Nigga, I don't know what's happening. Nigga, I don't know what's, yeah, nigga, we done pulled a damn little, got you a little young nigga out there. Yeah. So, uh, 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 but once I came in and, and saw what I saw, my, my energy shifted. Uh, so, uh, because of the professionalism and, and the quality of this platform, uh, nigga, y'all was able to draw something out of me that very few get. Uh, a, a calm, laid back, uh, authentic. Uh, this is real Charleston right here. We want to talk the blue, man. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Trying to just, yeah. blue, man. Uh, nah, this the real, this blue right here. Nah, this the real me right here. This whole platform. Uh, you take me that long to drink in real life. So, nigga, hurry up and drink your drink. So, mother got to pressure me to drink. Uh, so, nah, homie. So, uh, this this is uh, this is real refreshing. And and, and, and I think that, uh, I think you guys, homie, uh, y'all may be the answer. Come on. For what y'all asking me for the youth. They have to know that uh, men cry, uh, men lose teeth, men get ball spots, uh, men recover from wrong choices and decisions, uh, men aren't always right. Uh, and, 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 and that's what the culture has been missing. Uh, nigga, the, the last platform that gave us that was Tigger in the Basement. Man, I missed that show. 
That was the last platform that gave us access to the men. Pull the veil back. Yeah. Stop, chop it up. Yeah. Get your performance at the end. Yeah. You know. Yeah, so uh, so before Dick Gregory died, he came through the city. Legend. He came He came Legend. through Arlington, Texas. Uh, I missed him. Then, that was a bad man right there. Yeah, buddy. I know. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and if you study if you study the young Dick, you understand how even more bad he was. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> yeah. There's a sound bite right there. Yeah, if you study the young Dick, he was real. <laughs> but but we got into the old Dick. Bye-bye. We got into the old Dick Gregory. And, and, and part of my internet persona was what I saw Dick Gregory do online. He's starting to make a lot of sense. You, 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 you tapping starting, in, yeah, ain't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, Nigga, that's part of my persona. Yeah, 100%. If you, if you really don't watch me, nigga, you see why, that's why I snap in, in, in interviews if you ask, because that's what Dick Gregory used to do. Yeah. He'd go off on the month, bro, and he used to cuss people out, come uh -huh. back, bring it funny, and he read a lot of newspapers. So that's why I read a lot. I once, well, let me finish this point. He made a statement to a young interviewer who asked him a bunch of stupid shit. He said, man, I'm getting ready to die. And you got me. You saw the interview. He cussed that nigga ass out. Man, you got asking me this stupid shit. Tore him up. Tore him up. <laughs> but then he built him back up and said, this motherfucker right here is more powerful than your famous celebrities. Because we can create our own narrative now. We the media. We the media. So just think about all these media outlets that just give us some bullshit. And everybody take it and run with it. We the media. Nigga, the news got to compete with us. We can rewrite narratives that ain't even true and make them true because people don't want the truth no more. They just want you to make them believe it. So the truth ain't the truth no more. It's what you can make people believe. So, nigga, I can come on here and say, yeah, man, I shot myself in the leg right here and then go on another platform. Man, I'm just playing. I'm playing tomorrow. I realized how easy it was to do that. So that's why our politicians, they don't rely on people like me and you that's informed. Nigga, they rely on the uninformed to stay in power. The ones they could sway. The uninformed. Yeah. So I understand that. So when Dick Gregory died, homie, that's where the spirit rose at. The Dolomite movie came out. That's when the light came oh, on. Shit. <laughs> that's when all this happened around the same time. Yeah. The Dolomite movie, that's when the light came on. And it hit me. Homie, our people need a character. They don't need no more rappers. They need characters. Mm. What did Tyler Perry get in? Muddy up, a character. Who loved Muddy up? Our mamas, our grandmamas. Who you think went to all them plays? And they knew it was a man playing that character. Right. And they love him to death. And they love Muddy up. <laughs> like, it, like it ain't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taylor, like it, like it ain't. <laughs> Come on, homie. <laughs> so... Uh, I tapped into, homie, uh, not knowing uh, that this would be the results. I was blind man shuffling. But the reason why the results turned out good is because there was no hate in my heart. Even though I was saying hateful things, it was no real hate. Uh, there's no anger in my heart when I'm saying, fuck you, bitch ass, nigga, crab ass. I ain't, I ain't mad at nigga. I don't even know you. <laughs> there's, no, there's no resentment in my heart. Uh, and I'm literally asking God to keep the heart away from hate while playing hateful. Right. Don't let me get stuck on stage, God. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Don't let me get yeah. Tupac got stuck on stage, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get stuck on stage. So that's why I'm playing past the internet to go into stand-up comedy. Got a few movie roles. Uh, so nice. uh, I don't want to get stuck on stage. I do want to exit and go back to the man yeah. because that's the legacy. Yeah, so let's 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 give Irmis a, a, a legacy, because nigga, if we keep Nip alive, the Crips got him. He belonged to the Crips. Irmis belonged to us. Saying a Gems. lot. Saying a lot. If, if ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know who Dick Gregory is, look up them videos. He, he you know, unfortunately he passed. Of course, he lived a long life, but a long life. Hey. I, I worked at the Improv. I, I still pick up shifts at the That's improv. where he came to, the Arlington Improv, yeah. And uh, that's how I met Dick Gregory. That's oh, okay. how I met T.K. Kirkland multiple times. That's how I know the people that you're talking about and yeah. what you're saying because you couldn't tell Dick Gregory nothing, just like you can't tell T.K. nothing. Nah, who raised? But these men, but these, <laughs> these, these are our granddaddies, nigga, man's men. Yeah. Say, homie, I done been in the lobby with T.K. and a motherfucker get loud. He goes, hey, hey, y'all be quiet. Like granddaddy and them. <laughs> 
So yeah, they listen. Yeah, nigga, they get he, quiet. Yeah. Motherfucker talking, phone ringing while he on stage. That's what men do. Men, homie, real men are not liked. Mm. That's why they don't like real men aren't liked because men have to establish law and order. And don't nobody like the man who has to establish law and order. Yeah. Correcting everybody. There's a quote that says, uh, if I was meant to be happy, I wouldn't be a leader. Because so, yeah. I cussed out. I cussed out Judge Joe Brown one time. <laughs> <laughs> on, on TV or like? No, in yeah, person. Uh, okay. On the phone. Oh, shit. Uh, we was on the phone call, man. And, and somebody I highly respected put me in contact with him. And he wanted to meet me, right? And uh, he started fucking with me to try to check my, my temperament. But I don't know he fucking with me. He, he doing me like I do the niggas on the internet. But I don't know. I get personal in my feelings because I can't out talk him. Yeah. I was trying to out talk an 80-something year old man uh, who's a judge, mm-hmm. graduated from law school, and been on earth twice as long as I've been alive. And man, I cussed him out so God, and he never, he never got in his feelings. His voice never went up. Uh. He kept saying, "Have you ever shot five police officers before, young man?" I told him, "Nigga, you ain't either, motherfucker. You been on TV, <laughs> sir." Yeah, but homie, he got a background. Oh, that old shit. that old nigga got a history. Yeah, that nigga was radical back in the day, mm. and he fucked with them pouncers out in yeah. So, uh, nigga, I could not talk him. So I got in my feelings. And I did just what every nigga do, hung up in his face. Fuck you, bitch ass nigga, and hung up. Uh, yeah, the nigga called my people back and say, put me on the phone with him. And I just listened. Say, tell him not to hang up next time, young man. <laughs> I was just putting his cards to see. He just wanted to see. Yep. Uh, but he was disappointed in the fact that I ran. Yeah, nigga, I hung up and ran. Say, tell him, hang, don't run next time. Men have disagreements, but they don't fall out. Mm, real men. Not over disagreement. Yeah, nigga, we just disagreeing, and I done got so mad, fuck you, bitch ass nigga. I'm out. <laughs> and hung up because I couldn't out talk him. I felt weak, I felt powerless. Uh, that's why niggas kill one another. Nigga make him feel weak with his words. Nigga have power with words because words have power. Mm-hmm. And if we teach that, see, we were taught sticks and stone may break my bone, but word, nigga, words hurt like a motherfucker. Like a motherfucker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nigga, it's some wars that been started over words. So uh, all the wars are starting over words. There you go. Now, with this rap music, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Especially with the like the new age. It's all about dissing each other and make, making somebody hurt. Yeah. To make uh, somebody want to come and kill you. But 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 what what we have to understand, we have to start painting a bigger picture. Nigga, when you come hurt me, you make my mama cry. My brother killed the nigga homie, did 31 years on a 114-year sentence from age 17. He's been out for like four months now. I never heard my brother talk about God in prison, homie. So I used to always wonder, does that nigga die in prison? He never went Muslim. And, and for a long time, he never seemed like he had any, any, any remorse for killing somebody. I told that nigga one time, man, I said, nigga, nigga, God ain't going to never let you out of that nigga if you don't at least have no remorse for his mama. Mm. Mm. My mother, homie, had me locked up for a murder. So what, nine months later, my brother catch a murder. So she got two sons locked up for murder, homie. And she worked at General Motors. And it's on the news. So she got to go to work with this shame, right, homie. Right. And these are high-profile crimes. My mother, I did seven years in the boys' home on a 12-year sentence. My mother never let me complain. She always say, son, I still get to come see you. Hmm. That other mother don't get to go see that man. Same with my brother, homie. 31 years. From seven, she, never let us, she never let us forget our victims. So if nothing else, homie, even though you think you had the right to kill this nigga, you still have to have some empathy for what he left behind and what you took from them. Mm-hmm. If for nothing else, mm-hmm. that's, how you, that's how you right your wrong. 
I, I ask children, home, I speak in elementary schools, and I make it so plain. I ask children, how do you know if you're a good person or a bad person? And, and nobody can answer. Not kids. And this is what I tell them. Do you feel bad when you do wrong? That's how you know. Right. Do you feel bad when you do wrong? Right. If you tell a lie and somebody believe you, do you feel bad? You feel bad. I do. Yeah. If you steal something and don't nobody know you stole, do you feel bad? I do. Hmm. That's how you know. And that makes sense to kids. Yeah. That young, that early. Hmm. What yeah. what what books would you recommend as a reader? Uh, Understanding the Power and Purpose of a Man by Dr. Miles Monroe, uh, and that's for boys. And Understanding the Power and Purpose of a, of a Woman uh, by also Dr. Miles Monroe. Miles Monroe. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I come up on his teachings. He got, mother, he got some stuff. Yeah, my mother used to send me his teachings. So uh, even though he taught biblical principles, he taught a kingdom concept. So the world is a kingdom world, kings and queens and rulers and, and, and uh, we, we're the only corporation with a president. Notice I said we're the only corporation mm. with a president. Mm. Heard you. It's a business. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. So, so he spoke from a kingdom. So he spoke from a kingdom standpoint. And, and I know that went over a lot of people here, but a lot of people got it as well. Uh, one of the books that I would, I, I would suggest reading right now, homie, uh, two books, nigga, uncle Tom's cabin, which is a big old long motherfucking book. Uh, and uh, The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. And you would understand everything from rap lyrics. Uh, there's, a, there's, there's data in this country that everybody overlooks and, and does not focus on. In America, one in every three black males will go to prison or be on some form of community supervision in their lifetime. The United States of America lock up more people per capita than anybody in the world, yet we're the freest country in the world. Mm. Homie, an innocent person can go to jail in this country and never have broken a law. A guilty person can do something and, and get out of jail, right? That's, the, that's this justice system. Great. It's flawed and it's fucked up. So when you understand this concept and 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 and, and and in this book, the new Jim, man, she break it down so 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 plain and simple, nigga. I do this. I I I, I go to schools and do book challenges, right, throughout the school year. And this is one of the books I had the kids read. Do me a three page essay. I'm get away five hundred dollars first play, two fifty the second play. Nigga, the mamas and everybody be trying to help them kids do that shit. <laughs> so listen, right? Uh, but the new Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander, homie, uh, it breaks down. The, nigga, it's still Jim Crow. They ain't took the signs down, nigga. We think we have equal rights and equal protection, and we don't. We just integrate it. We never got equal rights. Settled we never that. got equal protection. We settled for them taking the Jim Crow signs down and letting us eat at white folks' restaurants and sitting at the front of the bus. After that, we've been okay. We never asked for nothing else. Right? So all of us right now, homie, can go... Go find 100 pregnant black women. How many of y'all having boys? Me? One, two, three. These babies are not even born yet. One of your babies going to prison. Mm. One out of three. Listen mm. to what it says. One in three will go. Not maybe. Not might. It says will go. Will. And if they don't go, or on some form of community supervision in their lifetime. So we got one, two, three, four, five of us. How many of us done been in jail on probation? Raise your hand. God, I Come on, homie. Yeah. <laughs> so, Damn. so, so. Five of seven? Five, yeah. So think about this. The question we've been asking one another, what can we do to stop it? Nothing. Right. Right. Because they said one in three will go. Ain't nothing we can do, homie. We can go to the maternity ward and watch all the black baby that just been born, homie. One, two, three, one. Yeah. I'm going to prison, homie. I walk into the schools as low as the third grade and go one, two, three. One of them going to prison, so we gotta equip him and strengthen him for, so he can make it through prison. Mm. 
we got to get his mind first. Shit. So it's nothing that we can do, homie, because we settled for integration and not equal rights and equal protection. That's why the Asians got a hate bill, and we don't. And it was passed like this, too. It didn't take long. It wasn't no 100 years of this, 100 years of that. It was as soon as social media and on the news, and, you know, they were getting socked in public, which, of course, I don't advocate. But I don't advocate any. Homie, listen. You know. Nigga, the Asian store owners love me in the hood, nigga, because I'm, I'm the nigga going there and telling them young niggas, y'all go respect them. I catch y'all now, nah, homie. I pay for what they stole, make them come back and apologize. Mm. Homie, one of the most meanest Asian judges who everybody in the black community swear is racist. Nigga, I fuck with Judge Alex Kim. I'm, he, he, he moderated on my Murder Change Me uh, event with, with Lil Snoop Mama, Mo3 Mama, FBG Doug Mama, mm. Tuka's Mama. Mm. So uh, the narrative that I hate Asian, nah, homie, I don't advocate wrong to nobody. Who wrong? Who right? Huh. And every now and then, nigga, I like to say I'm wrong. Mm. Because it makes me right at times to say, yeah, man, I'm wrong with a motherfucker. Because I can correct my wrong and make me right. Yeah. I'm trying to right my wrongs. Yeah. So by me saying, yeah, man, I'm wrong. And nigga, I'm honest enough sometimes to say I want to be wrong. Fuck it. Mm. And that's between me and God. Right. Sometimes I want to be wrong. And it's okay. Because <laughs> I'm human. Yeah, I'm human, my nigga. Sometimes I want to be wrong. With with all the stuff you're saying and all the gems you're dropping, right, of course this is going to go over some people's head. and Hopefully it doesn't. Have you ever thought about doing an audio book, a documentary yeah. uh, book? and uh, Like, it got to be on the work. I need nigga. that white man y'all got over there in the corner, man. I, know, <laughs> I need him, man. I know with him, I can get it done. <laughs> I'll be trying to tell him. <laughs> shit, I know, I've, been, I've been observing this shit, nigga. I know I done been around a whole yeah. bunch of places. That's Stan Lee over there. <laughs> yeah, I'll be trying yeah, to tell him. Nigga, Wakanda wasn't shit without now Stan Lee. Yeah, every everybody got to have a Stan Lee. The Mexicans got to have one. Yep, the Jews yep, got to have everybody yeah. got to have that year. Yeah, that's Stan right. Lee, man. Stan yeah. Lee <laughs> but the reason why I say that too, because not just the book itself, like a lot of the comments that I was seeing, man, he dropping gems. Man, I'm glued to this right now. I ain't going nowhere. I'm tuned in. I'm just I'm just, stuck. Just the spirit man, homie. Uh mm -hmm. just the Charleston, y'all don't get the access because most people don't ask these questions. Most people, most people turn me off, homie. They want to ask about the internet, nigga. Y'all didn't mm -hmm. ask me one internet question one time, <laughs> nigga. Y'all, nigga, y'all, nigga. I don't, I don't, I'm lost right now because, uh, uh, it's uh, this is this is rewarding, mm -hmm. nigga. The last time I got anything close to this uh, was Revolt TV, and they took it down. Damn, that was the first platform that really just let me explain, but they was really trying to shame me. Yeah. They didn't know yeah. my they didn't know my explanation was gonna make sense. They didn't want it to. Nigga, or Big Bank is the street G nigga in Atlanta. Nigga, that's the my, big Big Bank a bad motherfucker in Atlanta, huh? That's the nigga played in the movie or uh, it's, it's, uh, Superfly. Superfly, Shoot. homie. Nah, Big Bank a big dog, Shoot. homie, in, in Atlanta. And then you got ba uh, 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 Baby J, nigga. That's big. That's that's Meech girl. That's Big yeah. Meech partner. Right. So. The energy, homie, they was, you know, I'm the nigga talking about snitching and telling. They can't so, but because I was so genuine and authentic, homie, if you ask me about anything I've said on the internet, I can give you a reason why I said it, and it makes sense. Yeah. I won't justify it. I can give you a reason why I said it. Mm -hmm. So up until now, not many platforms allow me to explain. Really, yeah. Nigga, they trying to rebut, catch me in a lie, or defeat me in a verbal judo conversation. Yeah. So it's not to really see who this man is. Very few platforms is interested in the man. So when I see they ain't into the man, guess what? I give him one hell of a character. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so to that. But yeah. I, I ain't going to let you get past that. If and when you do a book, because you got to, it's, you owe it to the people. Yeah. Do an audio book. Well, that's the... that's your the, voice. That's the new game. Because, man... Audiobooks are the shit. I, I'm I'm so into audiobooks. Like when when you're mentioning books, I'm over here writing them down. Yeah, uh, man, just check. <clears throat> just uh, I forgot who I told to go do this. Oh, my partner Trent Rose, uh, the pimp nigga, homie. Uh, 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 what's his name? Rosebud, 
Rosebud, the pimp dude, or uh, that's on the movie Pimp Pimps Up Hold Down. I, don't he, know. I can't tell you. Uh, but just check him out, homie. He uh he got audio books about his pimping life. Oh shit. Uh on on on, on, on YouTube, right? That's who got me into listening to audio books. So when y'all see me on Queen's Flip and niggas say, Well, you how you blind and you read? I said, Nigga, I listen to audio books. <laughs> <laughs> well, Queen's Flip a quick, trip. Salute. Yeah, yeah. Uh so so yeah, man. So I I wasn't bullshit, homie. I was just mm-hmm. getting in getting into audio books, right? Uh listening to Rosebud. But nigga, he put the music, the voice tone, yes. the voice fluctuation, homie, it made it so captivating. That's how we're going to get to the movie, The Book of Eli, in real life. Because everything is going to go to audio. There won't be no mm. more physical books anymore. That's why when our kids come home from school, nigga, they ain't got no physical books. But there's going to come a time when everybody's going to be looking for physical books. Right. And they're going to be hard to find. Scary thought. They right. put it in the movie. How is it? Y'all saw what happened in the book of Eli? You yep. think that's just in yep. the movie? Yep. And, and you can't find books anywhere? Ain't nobody going to the library checking out books, huh? It's going to be an audio. For sure. Nigga, they going to start putting it in digital. That, that sonogram shit, the hologram <laughs> shit, motherfucker <laughs> popping right. up talking to you. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. holograms. In yep. your crib. Like. <laughs> well, that's where AI is taking us, homie. Yeah. AI is taking us where... The human mind is 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 gonna be devalued because the AI's mind is gonna be twice as good as ours, and it's just like now. Google, tell me such and such, and Google go to talk to us. Siri, tell me such. In French. Come on, homie. <laughs> yeah. So, nigga. Oh. Uh, yeah, I wasn't meant to be in this generation. Me neither. They got a chip. They got a chip that they just introduced. They put it in a paralyzed man's body. The chip told the brain to tell the legs to walk. Bluetooth. Nigga, deep, that's Crazy. what it was. He Bluetoothed his death yeah, from his spine. <laughs> Crazy. No, for real. No, nah, homie, real. for real. And he walked? Man. Man, listen. It, it, it's going to get to the point now, nigga, we won't know what's real or fake anymore. Yeah. We're going to be talking to humans that ain't going to be real. They're going to be AI motherfuckers. Don't Man, y'all I, wonder sometimes motherfuckers jump in your comment section, yo, <laughs> so all this motherfucker said, yo. <laughs> like, fuck? Uh, fuck King Von. If you're watching right now, hit us with a yo. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see how many AIs are in here, goddamn. Yeah, they, and yeah. again, if you're watching right now, hit that like button right, right. now. Let Subscribe me. right now. That's how Share you show love. Right now. Hit the super chats right now. That's how you show love. That's the only power we got is that little old bit of love right there. If you oh. can't donate, you can't, man, if, I man, just sure. And they still won't <laughs> hit the like button. Man, like, I'm man, telling you. Fuck them. Uh, they, listen, YouTube know uh, that that little like button can change your life if everybody liked it. Mm-hmm. They know that people are so hateful in their hearts that they won't take time to like nothing. Yeah. And it's just a little click. Man, that look like with all these people in here will change the whole dynamic of these views tomorrow. Right. It'll push them so, but, you know, uh, you hate to sell that to people. That's why you see our, our, our celebrities and our entertainers crying about this new AI shit. Because they fit out to come back down here with us, nigga. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Technology for to make them normal motherfuckers. <laughs> it's already happening. And guess what, nigga? It's pushing normal people up there with them like me. Like us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 y'all too, nigga. I'm yeah. thinking I'm thinking y'all already there. See how see how y'all yeah, yeah. I'm thinking y'all already there, nigga. Trust. Yeah. Nah, we're just babies in the game still. <laughs> trying to tell me we're just babies in the game. So what what type of charities do you have, if any? And and where could we go to donate to that charity? Uh I let my five oh one C three go. Uh twenty twenty seventeen. Uh after doing uh Youth advocacy work in Washington, D.C. and around the country from 2012 uh, to 2017. Uh, and, man, I hate to put him out here like this, but shit, he retired. So uh, I, I spent a few days at, at, the, at the executive director of the Annie Casey Foundation. Uh, and if anybody know anything about the Annie Casey Foundation, that's the motherfucker that give money to all the foundation. So they, uh-huh. they are a 501c4 who gives money to the 501c3s. So you got 501c3s who ask for money, and then you got 501c4s who give the money. Right? So 
if you got an endorsement by the, the Annie Casey Foundation, home, you can get any grant from, from anywhere. And so uh, I, I spent uh, two days at, at, at Bart LeBeau's house. And at the time, he was the executive director of the Annie Casey Foundation. And uh, met with his wife. Oh, they were real crazy about me. And, and they was training me on, 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 on terms and, and, and terminologies and, 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 and words to use when meeting with politicians on Capitol Hill. And uh, I was looking at, at, their, uh, at their library shelf, the bookshelf, and I saw this book that said the revolution will not be funded. Now, we all done heard the revolution will not be televised. Mm-hmm. The revolution will be televised, people. Yeah. Nobody back in those days pro- pro- projected the cell phone era and camera phone. Yeah. So they yeah, thought the over. motherfucker wouldn't be televised. <laughs> no, no, it's going to be televised. The revolution will not be funded. That's why most people you know with a nonprofit organization is begging for money, including your pastors. So this book, another book y'all should write down and read called The Revolution Will Not Be Funded, was written by a Jewish council. And in this book, it, it breaks down what they call and describe the nonprofit industrial complex. Oh, shit. oh boy, that's, that's, a, that's a smart nigga over there. He yeah, just them yeah, words yeah, alone. Yeah, yeah. Nonprofit <laughs> industrial complex. So I'm going to pose this question. Why do you think you see so many black people when they think they get on, they want to get a 501c3? Why do you think so many black people want a 501c3? Well, in this book, it tells you why. Why black people, rich people, white people, anybody want a 501c3 to funnel money from taxes. Taxes. Number two, to control. Well, this is why the nonprofit industrial complex was created. Number one, for funnel money for tax purposes. Number two, to control and hinder social movements. To control and hinder Social movements. 501c3s and nonprofits was created uh, in response to the civil rights movement. Okay. To control and hinder social movements. So when Dr. King then went to Washington, D.C. To, to give that monumental speech, uh, I Have a Dream on, on the Washington Mall, uh, before he gave that speech, they invited six to seven pastors to meet with the president. That's when they agreed to take the signs down. And each one of those pastors was given. I think that might be me. Each one of those pastors was given a lump sum of money for funding. Right. The civil rights movement needed funding. Uh, up in, For the most part, Harry Belafonte was taking care of Dr. King, funding him. Right. So to hinder and control social movements. So I let my 501c3 grow. And just call myself a youth outreach. And I never applied for a grant. I never asked white people for money. I got money from the prostitutes that walk the streets. I threatened to call the police on them bitches. Y'all seen the video? <laughs> oh, shit. Y'all seen that video? I told them hoes, ain't no pussy being sold out here to the kids get on the school bus, bitch. And they didn't sell pussy. Uh, so now, homie, I use the community. I use the community. Why we got to go downtown to white folks? So once the white people saw that I could do that, I garnered more respect downtown. So uh, so I I let my 501c3 go, and then I started understanding why the black church in any church got in bed with the state by 501c3. Our Constitution says that the state and church is to always be separate. But when President Bush (laughs) enacted this faith-based initiative and started given the faith-based initiative, people 501c3 status. Now the churches can claim tax exemption. Yep. She it ain't for the people no more. Yeah. So nigga, I'm for the people. So I don't do, so no, nah, I don't, I don't ask for don- no donation. I never post my cash out. So if, if, if you want to help my organization, look for somebody locally that you think is doing what I'm doing and commit to them monthly and give it to them. If you don't trust them, Start volunteering at your school and start looking down at the nigga feet with the worst shoes in the school and watch how his behavior change when you buy him some new shoes. Mm. Right. Right. Yeah. 
Damn. Something so simple. Yeah. Yep. Damn. I ain't mean to do this to y'all, man. I know y'all nah, thought y'all was going to get bullshit. Y'all nah, thought y'all was going to get bullshit. No apologies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No apologies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yo, to, to go to the current events, right, just because there has to be the one that I've been I've been watching, is uh, the woman who claimed she was kidnapped. Y'all, you seen that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew that bitch was lying from the jump. <laughs> so she was like... like yeah, yeah, they didn't, they didn't, yeah, she was lying from the jump. They said she was Googling ways to disappear yeah. and all kinds of wild... Yeah, the craziest ho- part was that she she was watching the movie Taken. Yeah, ho who come up missing don't show up back home. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she show up a lot of places, but not back home. Man, she was smart for a minute, though. Yeah. She yeah, uh, well, full, full yeah, she should she should have made somebody put a few knots on her head. Uh, <laughs> Something. Uh, yeah, yeah, Something. yeah, yeah. Uh, fuck her longer than what she need to be fucked to make it look like a rape. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She didn't stage it good enough. Yeah, yeah. Now, nah, like uh, at all. Well, like, this like what people a... this what people fail to realize. If somebody do something bad enough, and they take it serious, they just go to space and run a space camera. That's how they caught the Boston Marathon. Motherfucker, walk that motherfucking bomb package all the way back to that. Yeah, they went and rewind the tape. That's all they got to do, homie. Rewind the tape. Yep. We Every, keep forgetting that, homie. They can rewind the tape from the satellite. Yeah, like watching you everywhere. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, what's his name? Eric Snowden. He told us what they were doing. He told her what, oh, yeah. Al, Al Snowden, right? Al Snowden. Is it Eric? Eric, Eric, Eric yeah, Eric Snowden. Eric. He's still on the run. Yeah, he's still he in Russia. Yeah. Yeah, that's where the movie, uh, what's the movie come out when he was telling the government spying on everybody? Yeah, Eric Snowden. Yeah. Edward Snowden. Edward, I knew yeah, Edward. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, calling him Eric. Like Edward. was E word. <laughs> All right, Edward. <laughs> <laughs> Man, but like countless and countless gems in this interview. That's what people got to get out of it. That that's what we aim to do. Uh, you know what I mean? Is to aim to aim to speak to the the human behind whatever character there is with the rappers. Uh, we've got to open up a lot about a lot of the artists that do come up here. I hear you on what you say, but yeah. I, but I, I definitely think that a lot of the rappers are intelligent. Yeah, I do and too. They, and they and they hide it. They hinder it. And when you get a chance to actually speak to them in, in a platform where people are looking to speak to them for the human they are, they they open up and they start talking. Yeah, when Plies first came out, he sounded dumb and stupid until he started giving interviews and yeah. realized how intelligent mm-hmm. he was talking. He had to articulate. He was very articulate. Mm-hmm. But if you listen to his song and how he was talking at first. Completely different. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, man. We we need them to humanize a rapper before he die. mm we we mm. so we so desperately need that, homie, because then we can start having more compassion for these niggas and not hold them such high regards and esteem where they gotta crash out. Right. We need them niggas to be humanized, homie. Hell yeah. We need another man. We need an "I need love" song. Them niggas act like they don't even need love. <laughs> right. Everybody, You're man. Right. So yeah, no, man. So we it's. We have to do it, homie. Or, or else, what's coming behind us? How worse can we get? It can get worse. How worse? Nigga, I know a three-year-old killed a 12-year-old three weeks ago. A three-year-old? It's in the newspaper. A three-year-old nigga killed a 12-year-old. How that happened? The gun laying around and we so far, boom. Everybody want to point. Yeah, Everybody yeah. want to point and pull the gun. All the play play shit. Everybody want to point and pull the gun. Homie, it's some white household that got guns around, but because these kids was raised around guns, no gun safety, they never looked to touch the gun. It's only with a new kid come over and be fascinated stirring with the gun and eventually want to touch it. But a kid who understand the gun, they've been taught it, they're not fascinated by guns. We had an artist up here, Slat Zai. I'm not sure if you recall him. when Slat Zai came up here. Shout out to Slat. He uh, spoke on a story where his little brother died. His best friend came over, left the gun. His little brother grabbed the gun, killed himself. Just didn't know. And he, he had a choice whether it's this best friend, somebody that he hates, or he still loves. And he still loves him. And he said, you know, it was it was a mistake. And he understood that it was a mistake. He didn't take it as um, this guy killed his little brother 
And it was a heartbreaking moment for him. And it kind of shaped the man who he is today. I got two partners, homie. My nigga, my nigga saying little brother. Kill Tago, brother. Tago got a baby by saying sister. Them niggas been partners since childhood. 10, 11 years old. They done put in work and done things with people. Uh, these two G niggas, my nigga brother flipped out and just dry kill Tago, brother, and then shoot Tago. Mm. My niggas and them still love one another. It, it, it took some working because the family, the family, you know, uh, it, it divides everybody. Right. Now, I mean, my niggas and them, uh, yeah, that love, that love ain't lost. My nigga, my nigga same brother home now. Uh, yeah, how did they receive him? Uh, Everybody's still working to love one another. Yeah. Everybody's still working to love one another, homie. Uh, real love, homie, is hard to abandon. Mm. When you really love a nigga. Right. Nigga, it's a motherfucker really love each Yeah, homie, it's hard to abandon that love. And you really love that person. Right. You can hate them and still love them. That's why they say it's a thin line between love and hate. Mm. Uh. The human heart, homie, is so complex. Uh, the human mind is even more complex. Mm. Nigga, we don't even use all of it, but we use all our hearts. Mm. Nigga, we can tap into that whole brain. The forces don't let everybody do it. Nigga, everybody can't handle their own thoughts. No. That's what corrupts the heart. Nigga, them fucked up ass thoughts. Right. And if them thoughts seep into the heart, nigga... And that's where we're at now. We don't let the thoughts seep into the hearts. And we display it in how we treat one another. Uh, what them two niggas did right there, homie, what he did, what he had to do to uh, get himself to still hold on to that love. Uh, it's deep. That's, that's not left in many humans anymore. That's a special individual that can tap into that kind of strength. That's a wherewithal that, that, that wears away. That's some, that ain't, that's a strength that you have to tap into, homie. Right. Yeah, so I, I admire that nigga. Yeah, whoever that nigga, I admire that nigga. That's deep. <laughs> that really is deep. How, how do you think the world would Sheesh. receive an interview like this, a conversation like this? Uh... They're going to get probably 50. I, I see at least 10 viral clips. Uh, because this is a softer light of, 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 the, of the Charleston white persona. Uh, people want to see me hurt. People want to see me broken. Uh, and y'all gave them that without giving them that. Mm. Not how they want it, but. They got it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm vulnerable right now, huh? Yeah, I don't share. Uh, I, I'm not in a weak st but nigga, I, I'm open because I done brought me out here. This me, y'all. Yeah. These are me. I ain't winning character. I ain't, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, no. Nah. Y'all know I ain't said yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, not nah, one time. Yeah, you ain't pulled a gun out, uh, the mace out. Well, well, well. I'm, I was worried about the bear uh, mace. I'm like, how does he? How does he go with uh, the bear mace? I haven't had to think. I have. I haven't had to really think about what I'm saying. It's just flowing. Yeah. So that's where a lot of the uh um uh, I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, no. Nah. I'm turning up with a thought. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, Something coming behind that. Yeah, nah, homie. This just it, it's just been it's this is a natural flow of of, of the spirit that that resides in me. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh much yeah. appreciated by the way. I'm yeah, I'm I, I, for yeah, homie, I uh, I'm telling y'all, my nigga, we need this. Uh I just didn't know it existed. I thought everybody uh because of what the algorithm Digest this. It, it digests the bullshit, right? Oh, yeah. it, it, it accepts the good shit if you can get it in. But because it's so easier to run with a, 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 a that yeah. algorithm, a motherfucker, homie. Yeah. 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 It, that, and, so, yeah. and so it asks for the bullshit mm -hmm. because that's what the people want. So it's, it's like supply and demand. How you going to be mad when the demand wants it? True. This is the demand of the people. 
the further we go along, they're going to be asking for live executions online. We're going to go back to the Roman days, homie, the Roman, the Colosseum days. We're going to want to see a nigga wrestle two lines in the barrel like the movie Gladiator. We're going to be asking for that. We really want to see people get killed live. Niggas we don't like. So uh, the, the demand is, is the algorithm is just feeding the demand. Right. And the algorithm is never wrong. The people are. The algorithm is giving the people what they want. Yeah. It definitely is. Yeah, uh, people are wrong for wanting. Yeah. This but shit. You know it, what I'm it, it definitely shit feeds into the negativity, but just people like historically human nature, like there's a saying that we have in my industry. I, I got a health insurance company. Yeah. And one thing that hurts our business is a negative review. So how do I combat that in the face of new clients? So I share with them, I say, well, keep in mind, people don't tend to positively rate the people they pay bills to. People are much quicker to write a negative review for people that they owe money to. Yeah. It's easier to jump on the internet and say, it wasn't this, it wasn't that, it wasn't this. People don't go to the review sites to say, this was great. Yeah. Some people do. But much more are quick to say, they forgot my napkins. Yeah. They forgot the extra ketchup or whatever the case might be. So, one, negativity is just... It's almost in human nature. It's easier for them to go ahead and bring that to the forefront. But then it's multiplied exponentially by the algorithm. Yeah. And those are the clips that that are brought to the forefront. Those are the ones on the For For You page, FYP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are the ones that that that, get up there. uh, If you get into the algorithm in the wrong way, uh, you're going to be destroyed. Yeah. Uh, uh, It'll hurt your children. Because, nigga, every time they wake up and look, it's there. Yeah. So I try to be very mindful, uh, not with my words, but with my actions. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm real. Yeah, I'm very strategic in my actions. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, my words, uh, I can always uh, give you an explana- explanation for what I've said. Mm-hmm. It's hard to explain what you've done Yeah. and make people understand it. One thing we talk about up here, I mentioned with uh, uh, Migs dancing. Um, there's a difference between excuses and reasons. Yeah. If somebody's going to be giving me excuses, I don't really want to hear that. Nobody does. Now, if you got a reason, it's different. There's uh, a reason why I'm late versus your excuse why you're late. There's whatever a, the case might be. There's a 18 year old kid that just was found guilty of three attempted capital murders at a school shooting uh, in Mansfield, Texas. He didn't give up and give his reason. So the jury never could see. All they got is this video. Right. Listening to the lawyers make excuses. Yeah. So, uh, huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's a big difference. It's so a difference. Yeah, man. it's a big difference. If people could differentiate the difference between excuses versus reasons, you'd probably stop making a lot of excuses. Yeah, find the reason. Uh, you yeah. Know? Now, if, if you uh, if you do something, and you say, "Yeah, I did it," and give a reason why you done it, it ain't got to make sense to people. People respect the fact that you said you did it you, and had a reason right, to do it. Right. I was hungry. That's why I robbed them. Oh, oh, oh okay. Yeah. Oh. We give you ten years, but <laughs> goddamn it, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so, 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 so now, homie, I, I, I've learned that for one, uh. Having the ability to accept accountability uh, offers you mercy in a lot of situations. Mm. As a man, when you accept responsibility and hold yourself accountable, uh, even your woman could be merciful when you can do that. Mm. So uh, in court, homie, same thing. Nigga done wrong. You know you done wrong. Man, nigga, you done wrong, Same, my yeah, nigga. Come yeah, on, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody can ex- come on, man. <laughs> Not that ex- you're gonna, it's gonna excuse it, but nigga, it's 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 it allows you to get mercy in many aspects and situations throughout life. Just being accountable and say, yeah, I was wrong. I done it, yeah. and here's why I done it. Right. Yeah, it's definitely okay to admit you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah, and we, have a reason all, why you We all have it. our wrongs in life. Yeah, and have a reason. Man, I want to be a low-down, dirty motherfucker. That's why I done it. <laughs> That's your reason? Okay. If yeah. you go fuck with you, hell yeah, cuz. <laughs> Do that shit again. <laughs> now, before you take off, 
uh, so, something I want to know. I got I got two real questions I want to ask. Is you obviously have a family? Yeah. How do you juggle everything that's going on in your life right now in family? I give everybody money. <laughs> <laughs> Problem yeah, I, solver. <laughs> well, uh, there, there was a time when 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 nobody knew me in the world, and the family had all of me. I was there every day, walking the kids to school. They got cooked breakfast in the morning. Uh, I cooked dinner when they got out of school. Uh, we went to the library after school. Went and picked mother. Went to the park. Right. Uh, we rode the bus downtown. Put the buses. Put the bikes on front of the bus. They ride the buses while I walk. Uh, we got on the trains. We went to the lake. So it, it was a time that I was there every moment. Uh, yeah, rearing his daddy. But I couldn't buy nothing. I couldn't go nowhere. But nigga, I was there every day in the house with them. Uh, they can access, you know, I was accessible. Uh, but nigga, we were financially struggling. Yep. I remember one time, nigga, uh, baby mama had just went to jail. I'm in a one bedroom apartment. Uh, I'm sleeping on the couch, nigga. My daughter in the bed, my son got the pallet on the floor. Nigga, I got that motherfucking uh, good time, that James Evans good time van. So my son was shamed to get picked up in school and dropped off in school. Uh, and nigga, one day I'm in the office talking to the principal. And I'm going in that nigga role. And I said, yeah, I'm just a poor nigga daddy. Man, my son heard me say I was poor. Man, we got to the car. That little nigga looked at me and said, Dad, are we really poor? And he had tears in his eye. He about nine years old, so he don't have no concept. Right. So today, if kids think they poor, that's some horrible, horrific shit. Right. And I don't buy Michael Jordan tennis shoes. So he really thinking up, yeah. So man, that nigga looked at me with tears in his eye. When I looked over at him, my soul was crushed, homie, because the reality just had hit me. Nigga, we really poor. Mm -hmm. I ain't grow up poor. I was a well off kid. But I'm trying to transition from the streets to, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I ain't been back to the streets. This depression make a nigga pick back up the dope sack. Mm. Nigga, I looked at my son and I said, yeah, mijo, we poor. Nigga, I can't describe how I felt. As a father, yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah, I see why niggas run off. That'll make a nigga run out. Yeah. So listen. You gotta face that. Yeah. Listen, no, that ain't the end of it. <laughs> nigga, that ain't the end of it. This kid looked back at me and said, is there anything you can do about it? That crushed me right there. Nine years old. That nigga says, is there anything you can do about it, Dad? I thought for a minute. I said, yeah, nigga, I'm waking up trying to do something. I said, yeah, I wake up every day, mijo. Nigga, I ain't no way in the world I go keep getting on this motherfucker poor. Right. Nah, homie, I ain't. Nah, Not nigga. So, that. so, mm. uh, so, and, it, and and here it is, nigga. I'm working in the community, helping other people's children. I'm doing. I'm giving away backpacks and school supplies. Uh, nigga, I'm giving away Christmas toys, but telling my kid, man, Christmas ain't about toys, cause I'm really can't buy them none. So I got to give them an excuse on why I can, instead of a reason. Daddy mm. poor. Mm. So I'm making up bullshit excuses. Uh, nah, nigga, uh, I don't give a fuck how they enjoy this money way more now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, nigga, they, yeah. <laughs> that'll bridge the gap. That'll yeah, <laughs> yeah, nigga, it's somewhere in the Bible. I don't read the Bible, but I done read that motherfucker once before. It's somewhere uh, in E class E say, money answereth all things. Money answereth all things. Now, some people say, well, it says uh, money is the root of all evil. It don't say that. It says for the love of money. Mm. It don't say mm. money is the root. Hello, it says for the love is money. Nigga, money answereth all things. Die and don't leave no money and see how they cry. Die and leave some money. They don't cry long. Mm. Nigga, they don't cry long when you mm. leave some money. Mm. Motherfucker ain't sad. And you done left something for them to get. Right. Nigga, they celebrate you, come put flowers and everything out there on that motherfucking graveyard for the next seven <laughs> generations. 
So, uh, oh, nah, homie, uh, I, 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 I couldn't keep giving my time, my mind, and my energy to a bunch of people who was draining me and ciphering me, and I got nothing in return. So anytime you spend your money, anytime you use your energy, there should be a return on it. And I learned that in a business class in, in, in pre-law school. ROI. ROI, ROE. Those are the main concepts in business class, nigga. Return on energy and return on investment. Right. So once I got that, life became a little bit more simple to me. Because now, nigga, if a nigga broke, it's all about time management. If a nigga rich, it's time management. That's the factor. So now I'm finding my time. Uh, I bullshit more. Because, nigga, I done, I done reached the outcome that everybody want. Nigga, getting the money. So uh, yeah. I, the, the energy, nigga, kind of bullshitting with. But, nigga, my investments, I get a good return on them. Right. So, yeah, I help a lot of people. But I don't help bullshit people. I don't help. I don't. I don't. I don't cast my money away to a nigga that's gambling and, and need help to pay his rent and come hit me because he got a gambling problem. Nah, I fuck with nah nigga nigga with businesses. Uh, uh, if I go to the strip club, uh, nigga, I ain't looking for. I'm looking for something to sew into as a as a. Well, I don't feel stupid. You see, what I'm saying yeah. so. Yeah, nah, homie, I, I'm looking for a a. a the right person or, or the right cause uh, to give something to. Right. Uh, I don't donate money to the church. Uh, I don't look to help people. Uh, I help people when the spirit move on me to help, when there's a need to be met. Right. Uh, so for my family, uh, I've been meeting everybody's needs financially uh, since uh, there haven't been one person to do that besides mama. <laughs> And so mama didn't make a lot of sacrifices to help all of us, homie. Uh -huh. And they hurt and they suffer. Uh, I'm not hurting and suffer to help everybody. Right. So that's uh that's my reward now. I get to act like granddad and them and big daddy and them and shove out the yeah, money. Yeah. What y'all need, man? Yeah, what be gone need? and talk shit. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, Cause that's what I was always told. That's what the man did. And he took care of the village. Absolutely. Took care of the village. Uh, and the last question I want to ask you is life is grand. Yeah, it really is. And I could sit here and, and ask the question out of a one to ten where you're at, but it's a it's a big thing. So out of a one to a hundred, where do you feel like you're at in the scale of life? Uh one through hundred, I'm gonna say four quarters. I'm in third quarter. I'm at seventy five cent. I got one more quarter to go before we gotta cash this dollar in. So when you look at the life expectancy of the black man in America, homie, we ain't living past 63. I'm 46. So if we look at this shit, nigga, I, I don't look at it. And I don't look at, at this point where I'm at in life, I'm not looking at my life in years. Nigga, each month I go by, nigga, I'm looking at this bitch, nigga, ain't got number such and such months left. Like the Fed time, homie. Yeah, I, I ain't looking at life down. in years, nigga. So we say 300 months, that's what, 15 years? Nigga probably got about 300 months left, my nigga. <laughs> hopefully not. Well, if we, hopefully, but, hopefully. Let, but <laughs> what, what, what we got to say is, homie, they ain't been wrong. They ain't been wrong. All these numbers and, and, and statistical data that they've been, homie, they ain't been wrong. The average lifespan of the black man, homie, is 63, 64. Uh, we done done good because we done made it past the gun violence, you know, rates. But nigga, how many of us are eating right, getting the proper sleep, working out, going to the doctor? Mental health. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I, I factor in, homie. You know, I hope I can make it that long. But realistically, we should, we getting out of here at 62, 63, my nigga. Yeah. Our women live into their seventies and eighties, but us men, we getting out of here at 62, 63, because of what we're putting on ourselves. Yeah. Uh. We don't, we don't give ourselves no meditating time, no alone time. Uh, we, we in the world is running us into the ground, and we're not learning mm. to hit the reset button for us. Man, niggas stress it. Uh, niggas in relationships they want to get out of. Uh, Jobs they hate. And all that's killing the, in, the inner man. 
That's killing a nigga dry to live longer. Most niggas, when you see them at 60, homie, they woe down. They ain't looking vibrant. Niggas ain't happy. Way odd. They, they looking like mm -hmm. they ready to get out of here, homie. When you look at the, the some of these women at 60, they looking like they living a whole new life. Second like they, life. Yeah. Rumba class. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I keep saying we can change the trajectory. Make the man happy again. We the happy wife, happy life. What about the man? They don't forgot about the man. That's it, why I fuck with Andrew Tate. Yeah. Yeah, he done forgot about the man. So I'm saying, uh, nigga, if you want to be a great man, just wait till you die. They go stand over and tell you. You just won't hear it. Mm -hmm. Don't look to her, but they go say it. And when you gone, that's when they go realize, man, daddy was great. Such and such was great because your presence ain't there. You cannot, alley, you cannot add and tally up who you are as a man until you gone. Mm -hmm. And that presence is not there. As long as you're here, they can't tally you up, my nigga. Right. They don't know what's missing until it's gone. Mm. I saw a video on, uh, I think it was from TikTok, but I saw it on Instagram. And it was a guy, he was gardening, but he was talking to the camera. And he said, um, this is what, he said, I had a profound moment where epiphany hit me. He said, I was, I was realizing that when you pass, what does it say on your tombstone? It says, he was a loving father. He was a loving son, a brother, all these titles. He said, I realized all those things are great, but those are things that you are for other people. I was a loving father to my kids, for my kids. I was a loving son to my mom and my dad for them. But who are you outside of that? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. If that, okay, great. But who are you for you? If that's who you were for mom, dad, brother, sister, neighbor, Co-workers, who, such and such. But well, who are you for you? What life are you living and setting up for yourself? For you. And I said, yeah. damn, on the tombstone, they don't say mm -mm. all that. It says loving father, which means who you were for them. Loving son, who you were for them. For other people, they don't say nothing about who you were for you. I won't mind to say a mediocre trumpet player who played great. <laughs> just a mediocre trumpet player who played great <laughs> come on <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. I like no, that man. I need that audio book man <laughs> I need that audio book man so what does a hundred look like for you oh uh, <laughs> man the old nigga 77 man his hands swole uh he got cancer prostate cancer the boy still at that poker house every night gambling <laughs> <laughs> he's still ticking uh granddaddy died at it ate his something. Uh, he died jacking off, laying across the bed, trying to pull his pants up after busting that lad. <laughs> uh, My man. <laughs> uh, Mama Seal, she died at 102. Uh, I want to be coherent. I want to still have my mind, my nigga, yeah. if I make it to 100 so I can get his mind to the next generation True. like the old niggas gave me their mind. So we won't ever forget about the niggas. Mm. I used to despise the niggas because I feel like they didn't teach us nothing. Uh, I used to didn't care about old people. They had their day. They didn't get their motherfucking ass out the way. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> but nigga, that's the fountain that we drank from. Right. So we can figure out life on our own terms. Because what ended up happening when mama and grandma and them leave, we try to remember all the things they tried to teach us. And it slowly comes back to us as we go on through life. But if we hold on to it and never forget, homie, our life would be much easier, much simpler if we just would have listened to those before us. We thought they didn't know nothing. Cause we, that was y'all day, homie. They knew more than what we knew. They've been on earth longer than us. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want my mind. Yeah, I want my mind at 100, homie. I can be in a wheelchair. I want my mind, though. Right. Yeah. Because right. if, if I keep this mind, uh, I can tell these legs to get up and walk, mm. even if they don't want to walk. The Bluetooth will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's got you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but no, nah, man, I appreciate y'all for having me, man. I, I really, appreciate uh, you. Yeah, yeah I really enjoyed this. We got, yeah, to, we got yeah. to make this happen again. Come on. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we got to make this happen. Come on.
Yo, if y'all are watching, you're still tuned in, make sure you hit that like, subscribe button, share this information with somebody else. This is the Dancer Project, episode number 127 with Charleston White. Hello. Say, and if y'all don't like me, man, just like the program and the platform for bringing out the best in me this night, man. So, Come yeah, on. If nothing there. Let's get it. Cut the string. Bless, man. Bless. <laughs>